Hello. Hello. This is Kelly Clarkson. Is this Eric the Midget? This is not Kelly Clarkson. This is more than likely High Pitch. No. Who's High Pitch? This is Kelly Clarkson. I think you're very cute. High Pitch, give Get it up. Of it. <laughs> A moment like this, some people wait a lifetime. Oh Don't want to hear this. It's time for the lit critics, and I'm hanging up the phone. Go fuck yourself, you fat fuck. Okay, can I just? This is the list critics, you guys. Um, that was actually Payton's intro. Whether or not you believe that is up to you. <laughs> can I just say that your your impression of Eric the actor sounds more like str- like a home star runner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound anything like me, jackass. Wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Homestar Runner. All right, here we go. We're going to begin as we normally do with 21 instances of Tumblr gets deep on these nuts. I hope not. Hey, <laughs> deep. Hayden, very deep. All right, number 21, Crust Rocket says, 20,000 flies tri- tied to strings pull my lifeless body into the sky. What? And Antioch replies with, you would not believe your eyes if 20,000 tethered flies hoisted my corpse into the sky. Wait, isn't that a song? I think, I don't know. It, was, it, wasn't, bu- it wasn't flies, it, it wasn't tethered flies, it was like butterflies. I feel like that Somebody was a, a shitty pop song from, like, about ten years ago. Oh, look at me. I don't listen to pop. <laughs> well, you know, you may not listen to it on purpose, but you hear it. Uh, number 20, uh, Sam, Sam Steve Sharon says, Someone, wow, you're so easy to talk to. I feel like our personalities fit so well together. Me. Thanks. I made this one special just for you. <laughs> okay. I get it. Uh, number 19, T with Bucky says, Half of the universe disintegrates. Deadpool looking directly into the camera. This is so sad. Alexa, play Ashes by Celine Dion. <laughs> you know, if only the uh, Fox merger had happened a lot sooner, they, they probably would have done that. Well, we're about to find out. They, they may squeeze it in at the last minute and be like, What happened here? <laughs> There was a comic strip I saw that had this woman, this pregnant woman walking, and then it shows Thanos doing the, and then you just see a baby lying on the grass going, what the fuck? Oh, that ain't right. <laughs> the, the woman disappeared and the baby's just like, what, what, what? Mm-hmm. All right, number 18. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't, isn't it, isn't it like out on DVD like now? Uh, in a t- couple weeks it will be. No, I, I think it's out already. Hold on, let me let me find out. It's out digitally. Oh, uh, well, that's good enough. Yeah. I d- yeah, um, August 14th is the Blu-ray. Okay, cool. Not bad. Okay, uh, number Thanks 18. Me, got it free. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's why I'm looking for a good copy. Myth is Chemiem's post this picture of... Um, Okay, well, let me read his post before I tell you what the picture is. Uh, he says, Please stop. Dutch is barely a respectable language as it already is. Have you ever read anything in Dutch? Or seen the Dutch language? Mm, to be honest, no. It looks almost like English. But like English if you were hit on the head a couple of times. So this is what this sign says. Oopsie whoopsie. Their train is stucky wookie. We season hul hard and to work on did to make Miss Kanji better fuitsen. Something about twerking, that's all I got out of it. Okay, it, it's at a train station. I'm just going to read the very first line for you again. Oopsie whoopsie, the train is stucky wookie. Oh no, the truck is, the train is stopped. Yeah, like I said. Dutch looks so much like English that it looks like English if you're hit on the head a few times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Uh, number 17. Uh, the Queen... Be- I almost said potato. It's the Queen Poet Tico 
post this picture of an elephant baby with the caption, Elephant brain react to humans the same way that humans brain react to puppies. They think we're cute. And the Queen Poetico says, My life has had no greater joy than knowing elephants think I'm cute. Okay. And you hear Gibbs give a loud sigh in the background. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but I'm laughing. Um, yeah, that's actually true. Elephants look at us and they think we're cute. Ostriches, too, apparently think we're adorable. Oh, I don't need to look so adorable. Don't you just want to pull his head out? <laughs> Number 16. Uh, Bloodbending says, Peter Parker in the 2002 movie is fucking incredible. He gets bitten by a fucking jacked red-blue spider, and he doesn't say, hey, someone should take me to the hospital, mayhaps. He just goes home. Then the bite swells to the size of a fucking jawbreaker, but he's like, nah, I just need a nap. Then he wakes up the next day and discovers that he doesn't need his glasses anymore, and he has a fucking six-pack. Does he flip his entire fuck? Nah, he says, cool. Iconic. And uh, Laughing Fish says, 2002 Peter Parker had no health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably right. Wow. Oh, that's probably correct. Number 15. Wow, the text on this is small. Okay. So, um, witty user named uh, posts a picture. Have you ever seen this thing where they, they, they put an octopus inside a mason jar and it can actually get itself out? Yeah. Okay, so they, they post some screen caps from that. And it says, my buddy read an article about octopus intelligence. It was feeding time, and the handler dumped some shrimp into an octopus's tank. Then he went into another room and sat at his desk. A while later, a shrimp was tossed onto his desk. The octopus, upon finding one bad shrimp in the lot, had grabbed it, escaped its tank, crossed the hole, and threw the expired shrimp at its caretaker. Not only does this showcase their problem-solving capabilities, but also that it could have escaped at any time. It just broke out in time to chuck an off shrimp in indignation at its handler. That's not just intelligence, that's a human-like reaction. Kind of makes you wonder exactly how smart these guys can be. Uh, Queen's Jen says, oh my god. And then Rose Weasley 7 says, I went to the aquarium once and we had a tour, and we walked past the octopus tank, and it was duct tape shut. So I asked why, and the guy was like, well, we had a problem before, because these fish were disappearing randomly at night, and we had no idea why. Turns out the octopus had memorized the night guard's rounds, and would creep out of its tank, crawl across the floor to the fish tank, have a little snack, and then be back in its own tank with the lid shut before the guard came back. They are super smart. Domina writes things, says, I love octopuses so, so much. Uh, Cassandra, uh, Cassandra shit pissed, or something like that, says, I am both delighted and fucking terrified. And Zivich Artiste says, Once I went to the aquarium where they had a baby Pacific red octopus in a tank. I had gone there to work on a few real-life sketches, obviously. I wanted to do one of an octopus. So I kind of just kneeled in front of the tank and, he, and started sketching. The octopus didn't mind. He sat happily. Then five minutes later, he started moving to the front of the tank where I was. This tiny octopus faces me directly and starts posing. I don't know how other to explain it, but he starts curling his tentacles in this really graceful way, then wouldn't move for a few minutes. Then again, a new pose. This tiny, cute motherfucker knew that I was drawing him. <laughs> Octopus are the next evolutionary step for the fish. That's all I'm going to say. Like Remoraid? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Almost makes me feel bad that I ate some octopus yesterday. Almost. But not quite. Uh, number four. <laughs> <laughs> Brain How is it, by the way? Say that again? How is it, by the way? How is octopus? Um... It, it, it has to be done correctly, uh, or it tastes like shit, but um, it's it's delicious as long as it's uh, prepared correctly, because it can be kind of tough, you know? It has to be uh, kind of tenderized. But the flavor is there. Okay, so number four, uh, Brain Static says, Y'all think being a, in a goth relationship means wearing white makeup together, but Mary Shelley lost her virginity on her mother's grave, so maybe step it up. And Holy Fuck a Bear says, Mary Shelley carried her husband's heart around and lived in a crypt after he died. No one will ever be as goth as Mary Shelley. And then uh, Zarita says, she also, was, she also wasn't carrying, like, a mummified heart. Her husband's heart had calcified, meaning it had grown bone within itself and possibly around itself. And it is this heart of bone which she carried. When she was young, she carried it wrapped in a silk pouch, and when older, it was kept in her desk, wrapped in a page from his poem Adonais. 
Adonais was one of his last poems in which a deceased poet's subjects, nature, spring, and the stars, mourn him and long to join him in death. Then the narrator tells them not to mourn, for he has gone beyond where the minds and emotions of humans matter to the natural spirit that is the source of all beauty. Of his poems, it is, the, it, it is this which he wrapped his heart in. There is none more goth. And then Island Delbergo said, it's sad to realize that Pete Goth was a hit so long ago. Jesus. Yeah, no one's ever going to top. I mean, she wrote Frankenstein. It doesn't get more goth than that. And she wrote it because she was bored. Just imagine if she had some inspiration. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, number well, I'm pretty sure she was inspired at least by that one. So She was inspired to write, like, I'm bored with this. Let me write something down. And she comes up with this timeless tale, you know? Okay, number 13, Teapots Ahoy says, When you're like, this show is very good. In fact, it is too good. I want something I can watch with 30% brain, and this is minimum 60% brain show. And Oncoming Derp says, all the time. That must be why people watch the Big Bang Theory. Or Rick and Morty. Oh, I ain't got nothing against Rick and Morty. I just hate the fans. I hate it both. Yeah, the fans are just really super toxic. Uh, number 12, Venice here says, Truth or dare? Dare. Order me a pizza. And Sandpaper Dream says, <laughs> I have been blind to the possibilities of, you know, damn. That sounds, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Guys, try this out. Let us know how it goes. Yeah, let me know, too, because I'm always hungry for pizza. Number 11, I will not be caged, says, I'm tricking my students into writing a research paper by having them write an open letter and then strengthen their argument by adding evidence. They were allowed to write about anything they wanted for the first draft of their open letter, and one of my 10th grade boys decided he wanted to write about the girls who only like bands because their members are cute and don't really care about the music. I let him do it because I found that shutting down a student's idea at the first draft stage tends to make them more obstinate about the topic. I figured we'd get to the evidence-gathering stage. He wouldn't be able to find scholarly sources, and he would change his topic. Well, lo and behold, today he comes into class and tells me he's changing his topic. Apparently he couldn't find any evidence, and he figured he was being kind of hypocritical because he gets really excited about athletes he doesn't even know, and the only reason that's different than fangirls is because it's him. He actually told me that he realized that writing the first letter would be pretty condescending. He's going to write about LGBT rights instead. The next generation, y'all, there's some good stuff happening. Well, that ended on a positive note, huh? All right. That works. Um, number 10, Spanish Skullduggery says, Do you ever find things you wrote when you were little and you just really want to die a little? And, and then make, give an example. Me at age 11. I am a sea of feelings. I am an emotion. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's top cringe right there. Something like that, yeah. That's, that's bad. Emotional. <laughs> Number nine. A public school story says in seventh grade, our teacher made us submit an essay into a competition sponsored by a drug-free campaign. The essay basically had to be about how drugs are bad and our pledge to never do drugs. My friend won first place out of the entire district, and the reward was a check for $40 to be used towards college. That's not a whole hell of a lot of money for college, but okay. The check was written so that it couldn't be redeemed until 2017, the year we graduated, and my friend just now cashed it. She then proceeded to buy seven grams of weed with her drug-free essay prize money. <laughs> and then everything is better with a PH says, now that is big dick energy. It really is. <laughs> I love it. That's so stupid. Like you say, there's going to be a prize. You tell them it's $40 for college. What is that going to buy you? Two minutes in college? Maybe a textbook and that'd be it. I don't know, man. It's it, You have no idea. I mean, the, those textbooks are more like $80. Jeez, they've gone up since I was in it. Oh, yeah. And uh, and then it's post-dated for like several years. That That's a dick move. All right, number eight, Ham for Harry Potter says, Way too many parents need to learn the difference between a child being disrespectful and a human person expressing an opinion that differs from theirs. Uh, Jumping Jack Trash replies, My mom had a nice technique for this. When I'd give her sass, she'd say, I don't speak rude. What's that in polite personies? Basically, she'd encourage me to rephrase my opinion without the attitude, so, Ugh, you never let me do anything would, often after quite a bit of bitching and grumbling, turn into, it feels like every time I have a fun idea, you say no, and I just end up sitting around the house. 
and at that point we could troubleshoot like civilized people. She could explain that she didn't want me to go to Jimmy's sleepover because Jimmy's dad creeps her out, and I could suggest maybe I could have an all Andy over instead, and she could say, sure, why not call Peter and Stacy and Brianna and have your own party? I'll pop some popcorn and rent a movie, and I could add whatever... And I can add, what if we put up tents in the backyard and have a bonfire and roast marshmallows? And she could laugh and say, don't push it. <laughs> I like that. I don't speak rude. I might have to use that. I think you're going to start using it. I, I'm definitely going to start, especially that uh, my nephew Bobby is uh, developing himself quite the sass mouth. Ooh. Yeah. Does he get it from his uncle? He gets it from his mother. I'll just put it that way. Because he says some and, things, and I just kind of want to reach over and give him a good smack. I don't, of course, but it reminds me of dealing with my own sister, so he gets it from his mother. <laughs> Number seven, do the most St. Patrick says, sometimes it blows my mind that there are people that don't wear glasses or contacts. Like, they can literally see with no aid. Like, they wake up and just be out here seeing. What a wild concept. And Bumblebee Bat says, and people say stuff like, lol, don't you just hate it when you look up in the middle of the night and see a spider on your ceiling? Like, bitch, I could have Nicholas II, last Tsar of Russia, hanging from my ceiling fan, and I wouldn't be none the wiser. Trust me, wearing glasses and contacts suck. Well, I wear glasses, and uh, I wouldn't say it sucks, because I need these shits. I, I do. I wear glasses and contacts, and it sucks. Why do you wear both? Uh, because, uh... Wait, you don't, you don't mean I, at the same time, right? No, 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 no. Okay, because when you said you wear them both, I was thinking at the same time. That doesn't sound right. No, 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 no. You should be able to see through time at that point. <laughs> I wish. All right, number six. Greeland says, Can you imagine not being human and just living out your days as a weeping willow, though? Beautiful, by the water, unburdened, ideal. And Jealousy says, I want to be the one from Harry Potter that beats the shit out of everyone and everything. I like, I like it. I mean, if you think about it, there's a lot of weird shit in the Harry Potter universe, and the fact that there's a tree that just beats the shit out of everything that comes near it is is really great when you think about it. Yeah. You know that J.K. Rowling was having a good time when she wrote that part. Uh, number five, the uh, Jake English says, The power flickered three times. If we lose power, I'm quitting. Just give me 20 fucking minutes for my chicken nuggets to cook, please. Please. And the skies above life says, I'm vegan and I hope your power runs out. What a dick. Jake English says, that's fucking nice and all, but the chicken is already in the nuggets. The power going out doesn't say the chicken. It's a nugget already. Sorry. Mm. Metal Gear Zeke says, I love this post because they said they're a vegan like it's a Fallout skill check. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And then somebody photoshopped that into Fallout 4. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Okay, uh, number four, Petite Pot Princess says, uh, The idea of ghosts that moan may have been started by children that heard their parents having sex in an adjacent room and denied having heard it. <laughs> that could be true. I like it. Okay, uh, number three, the Vashti Narada says, You know how in musicals the couple will start singing the same song no matter how far apart they are? What if that happened in real life? What if you were just in a restaurant and one day and you just randomly started singing because your soulmate decided to sing a duet in the shower? And then uh, Cal Cat says, Oh my fucking God. What if this is why you get a song stuck in your head? Because your soulmate is singing it somewhere. And uh, Tuesday Moose Day says, It got better. And uh, Desitel is my top says, Jesus Christ. And then Yukono says, I don't want to be soulmates with someone who keeps singing Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> it's true, because when you get a song stuck in your head, it's never a song that you want to be stuck in your head. Stinky bitches, you got stinky bitches. Uh, number two, Galaxy of 13 says, uh, You know what I want more of? Variety in aliens. No, I don't mean more designs for alien species. I mean variety within a species. They always seem to have the same government, the same culture, the same religion, the same language. Come on, humans, don't work that way. Say, there's a caller over there. What are they saying? No idea. What? That's a Kinsian caller. I'm a Cerulean caller. You'd have just as much luck understanding them as I would. You're lucky I even speak human. Human isn't a language. What? Okay. I get it. We must, 
That makes sense. We must speak the we must speak the universal language of everyone and everything. English. <laughs> when you think about it, like you watch like Star Trek and all the Klingons spoke Klingon. Like they had one language for their whole fucking species. We don't have that shit. Of course not. Yeah. I mean, you know, the only reason that all the humans spoke English is because it's an American TV show. Yeah, from space. Yeah. Number one, uh, Ravens Luna says, I hate how reward systems never work for me. Like, I can't just say if I finish this assignment, I can have a cookie. Because my brain is like, or you could just have one right now. And I can't argue with that logic. And True Stories About Me says, self-imposed deadlines don't work either because I know the guy who set them and he's full of shit. <laughs> it's true. All right, well, um, out of 21, I, I'm going to... I, I actually rather enjoyed most of these. I'm going to give it a 17. I'll say 17 as well. That was pretty fun. All right. 15 joke, uh, Twitter jokes everyone should read. Uh, number 15, Elizabeth Hackett at Liz Hackett says, My parents are happily celebrating their 50th anniversary. That will be me and you one day, I quietly whisper to the gym membership I can't cancel. Why can't you cancel it? What's wrong? Well, sometimes you're like locked into a contract or something. Uh, oh, that's retarded. Yeah. Number 14, Jesse Dean at Nick Cage Match says, Seven stages of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, acceptance speech, after party. Party hard, dudes. That was dumb, Jesse Dean. I'm sorry. Just don't quit your day job. Uh, number 13, Karen Kilgariff at, Cal at Karen Kilgariff says, Perfume commercials work because we all want to be that girl wandering in a windswept field, wearing a huge sweater and no pants, pulling a daisy across our lip like a mustache, and then laughing hysterically, but with dead eyes. That is every perfume that I've ever seen. Pretty much. Yeah. I don't even understand how that works. Like, why? Who comes up with that shit? Number 12, Kevin Sakia at Kevin Sakia says, Gives my dog a treat. Here you go. You want a treat? Dog looks at it and then starts eating. Good girl. Damp pill falls out of her mouth onto the floor. She slowly looks up to me. I can explain. <laughs> You know, we got the dog's heartworm medication um, from the vet the other day, and they actually made the heartworm medication taste like liver, so the dogs just gulp it down. Good. Yeah. Uh, number 11, Simon Holland at Simon Chaholland says, Once you realize that you don't need a special occasion to buy a cake, the second part of your life begins. That's very true, actually. Yeah. And man, man does it suck. <laughs> Yeah, because then you realize why your parents told you that you couldn't eat an entire cake. Because it's a really terrible idea. Terrible for my thighs. Well, no, it's terrible for your stomach, too. I mean, you eat an entire cake, you don't re regret that shit. Then, and terrible for my colon, too. <laughs> you said terrible for your thighs. That, that is... What? Are you a woman or what? What the hell is that? I, my legs shave real easily, let's put it that way. Oh, oh, that's the sugar. That's I thought you meant like your thighs were getting fat, and I'm just like, who the fuck cares? Yeah, who does care? I'm just worried about my legs shaping is all. Just, if anybody ever calls you fat, just tell them you're thick. <laughs> With two With two C's. T's. Yeah. <laughs> okay, number 10, Ian Sausage at Stephen J. Molly says, Priest, we are gathered here today to mourn the passing of, looks at the casket suspiciously, Erwin Schrodinger. All right, I get it. It ain't funny, but I get it. It's more clever than funny. Number nine, and you know that Peyton doesn't even get it. You can tell because he's not reacting at all. Something about Aaron Schrodinger. You know who Schrodinger was? Uh, is is that a is that a uh, homonym for slong or something like that? No, no, no. It was a, it was a, it was a real guy. He he was the guy that came up with the idea that like if you uh, the the example was that if you put a cat in a box where you couldn't see it, the cat was in a quantum reality where it both existed and didn't exist at the same time, and it only exists once you open the box and can see it. Huh. Yeah. That's a simplified version of it. So the idea okay. is, like, is he really in that casket or not? I, All right. mind. Jake, I told you it wasn't funny. It's clever, but it's not funny. Jake Wiseman at Wiseman Jake says, One of the sadder moments in all our lives is when we put down Microsoft Word as one of our skills on our first resume. <laughs> <sighs> That's not a fucking skill. Oh, 
that's so true. We've all been there, though. Okay. If you if you can say Microsoft Access, then yeah, that's believable. Yeah, yeah. Even Excel would be more acceptable. But. Number eight, uh, Dirt Prince at Pants Leg says, Can all the attractive couples please leave Trader Joe's while I'm buying my depression ice cream? This time, it's not for you. Ouch. Okay. Uh, number seven, the un the untastic Mr. Fitz at Unfitz says, Continental breakfast should be served on tectonic plates. Oh my fucking god, that's terrible. Ah, uh, let's just move along. Uh, yes. Todd, Todd Poppy Carlos um, posts a picture of like a little tiny airplane that looks... I think it's a bus that looks like an airplane, and they say, This could be bus, but you plane. Huh? What? Oh, I get it. Like this could be us, but you playing? <sighs> I, it's not. It's not funny, but I get it. Wow, these are bad. I, I I bet you if I scroll to the top of this, it'll say Mike Primavera collected these. Yeah, Mike Primavera. He has the worst taste. Mike, you suck. You really do suck, Mike. Just just oh, please, yeah, two. stop. Just stop everything. Oh, uh, we're almost done. Number five, the hype at the hype says. I get home to find a note on the refrigerator that says I'm leaving and I'm taking the kids. Me. Unplugs the fridge from the power outlet. You're not going anywhere, you piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Number four, Dan Mentos at Dan Mentos says Magic Johnson wasted the world's best porn name on a basketball career. Didn't we hear that last week? Perhaps. I don't remember, to be honest. When you think about it, Magic Johnson would make a pretty good porn name, though. Uh, well, we got we got Fleece Johnson. Is that close? Yeah, <laughs> not really. It's not magic. Number three, not a wolf. It's sick of wolves. Says trying to pick my favorite part of being a human. I have to wear pants places, even though I was given no choice in being alive. Living in a society that actively romanticizes selfishness, despite being a biologically wired to crave community and unlimited soups, salads, and breadsticks. What the fuck? That's not even a joke. That's just insane ramblings. Mike. I don't know. Mike. Yeah. Number two, Glenn Lowry 2.0, darker, gayer, different, says, a group of drunk white people is called a sweet Caroline. You know, that joke would make a lot more sense about 40 years ago. And even then, that's kind of stretching it. And finally, number one, Ray at Sir Eviscerate says, ghost cat, how'd you die? Ghost dog. I bit a guy that ran over my best pal and they put me down. I got hit by a car. I know. I love you. What? Mike, this is depressing. This ain't fucking funny. Mike, what the fuck? We're at two. That's it. Two. I'm, at, I'm at one. I'm at one. I'm done with that. I think next time I'm going to look for one that wasn't from Mike Primavera because every time we do one from him, it's just shitty. Mike, you suck. You really Go do down suck. the street, just... not across. <laughs> yeah, just... Seriously, just stop everything. Just stop. Stop. All right, let me bring this... up my Top Buzz app, and we'll do some lists from there, because it, it, we got we to gotta bounce back from that. That was fucking lame. All right, let's see. Oh, wait, that's not how I do it. I always... Oh, here, i got to click this, and then the saved ones. Here we go. Okay, um... Well, here's just a fun facts thing. It's uh, 18 fun facts for uh, trivial pursuits, so that should be interesting. Uh, number one, uh, let's see. The traditional last meal on death row didn't begin as a compassionate act, but as a way to bribe their ghost not to haunt the executioners. Jeez. It's like, will you... I could see that the guy's looking at the execution, and I'm going to haunt your fucking ass. He's like, would you maybe say you won't haunt me if I give you some fried chicken? Mm, fried chicken. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. All right, number two. Madonna leaked a fake version of her album to Pirates where every song was a loop of her saying, what the fuck do you think you're doing? <laughs> In response, a hacker posted the real album on her own site for everyone to download with the message, this is what the fuck I think I'm doing. Don't want the pirate. <laughs> that's silly. I mean, if you want to put like a fake album out, that's funny. That can be done. Don't, don't 
not too bad. Uh, number three, night owls are more likely to be seen. Hello? I'm waiting for you to stop rolling down a hill or whatever it is you're doing. I'm not doing anything, I swear. I'm just it got, sitting it here. It got really loud all of a sudden. I said, night owls are more likely to be single. Well, I feel bad for my buddy Dylan, then. No. Oh, well. Number four. Bohemian Grove is a 137-year-old secret camp that Nixon called, and I quote, the most faggy goddamn thing you could ever imagine. The camp is private and only open to the rich and powerful men of the world. It is also where the Manhattan Project was initially planned. Ugh. Well, Richard Nixon didn't seem to care for it that much. Not really. Wow. Okay, number five. A grasshopper mouse from the Sonoran Desert is immune to scorpion venom and howls at the moon, getting the nickname Werewolf Mouse. Hmm. That's so interesting. There's a mouse that howls at the moon and is immune to poison? That's fucking awesome. We should dissect this mouse and find out everything we possibly can about it. All right. I think we made it on that. Yeah. Number six, new ponds can be naturally stocked with new fish through birds carrying fish eggs from one pond to another or on their feathers or feet. Well, that makes sense, because if you think of a pond, it, it, it's surrounded by land. How did the fish get there to begin with? It makes sense that that's how it happens. Right. I never really thought to wonder about that, though. Uh, number seven, two Oxford students heard that the author Rudyard Kipling earned ten shillings per word. So they sent him ten shillings and asked for one of his very best words. Kipling replied, thanks. <laughs> that reminds me of a story I heard about Calvin Coolidge. Uh, he was the president, of course, I'm sure you know that. But he also he had a nickname, Silent Cal, because he, he was a man of very few words. And there was this woman yeah. that came up to him at, a, at a, you know, some sort of presidential function, some party that he was at and said, you know, um, I bet my husband that I could get more than two words out of you. And he looked her dead in the eye and said, you lose. <laughs> okay, um, oh, this one's so zoomed out. Let me zoom in here. Okay, here we are. Uh, oh, I wish you could see this. These miniature, oh, fucking hell. These miniature religious relics from the 1500s are each carved from a single bo piece of boxwood. They are so tiny, researchers have to use micro-scanning to detect the joints within their inner layers, revealing that some of them are held together by pins that are smaller than a grass seed. Jeez. And they're quite detailed. Whoever worked on them must have wrecked their fucking eyesight, let me tell you that. And probably their hands, too. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, number... What am I at? Number nine. MRI of a dog's brain shows that they see owners as family and prioritize the smell of humans over everything. That's true. Is that true, Gibbs? He's sleeping. Number 10. A black robin named Old Blue has become the mother of her entire species when she was the last fertile female in a group of five robins. There are now 250 black robins on the Chatham Islands and have raised their status from critically endangered to endangered. Uh-oh. So that's good. I, uh, she got busy, huh? Yeah. Pooping out some eggs. Uh, number 11. Having the guts to fight used to mean soldiers being diarrhea-free and thus able to participate in battle. Huh. You know, I, I, I believe that because you know that most people who died in the Civil War died from disease. Yeah. So. Uh, number 12. Studies show having an exercise habit leads people to unknowingly create other often unrelated good habits like using credit cards less. If you say so. Yeah, I ain't got no credit cards. I barely exercise. <laughs> number thir Well, I think they mean having them but not abusing them. Uh, number 13, the city of Florence, Italy, has had the same wealthiest families for six centuries. Well, shit, that's some old money, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Number 14. How am I supposed to react to that? <laughs> oh, that's like interesting. This. That's very interesting. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> it made me laugh. That's all that matters. 
<laughs> Number 14. Owning an electric car in Norway grants you free public parking, free ferry trips, and the right to drive in bus lanes. Shit, dog. They I'll keep that in all right, uh, number 15, Samuel L. Jackson has a stutter. He struggled with it throughout his youth, and he learned to pretend to be other people who don't stutter. I guess that's why he's an actor. Eventually, he realized that he's never had trouble with his favorite word, motherfucker. So he says it to himself every day, even if it's only under his breath, and it, keep, and it helps him improve his speech. Well, there you go. I can just imagine he's just like... Sitting around in Starbucks, just mumbling to himself, motherfucker. This motherfucker, where's my motherfucking straw in this motherfucker? <laughs> and he's not angry, he's just working on his speech patterns. Yeah. <laughs> Number 16. According to scientists, the South China tiger is functionally extinct as one has not been spotted in the wild for over 25 years. However, a banker known as Stuart Bray has 19 of them held in captivity at the Luhau Valley Reserve in South Africa. Huh. That's weird. So they only exist in this guy's place. Hope he's got male and female. Sounds like he doesn't give a shit, to be honest. Uh, what? Who needs 19 tigers? That's excessive. To maul human beings. <laughs> Number 17, Brazil has more Lebanese people than Lebanon. Okay, well, Brazil's a fucking huge country, so I can believe it. Yeah. And number 18, the doesthedogdie.com website. You can find out if a pet dies, or is harmed, or survives in a movie. I don't think I want to find out about that. No, I mean, like, it, you know, because some people, they, they, they go to a movie, and then, you know, they want to know that does the dog live, because they don't want to see a dog die, so you can check it out before you go see the movie. Right. That way you don't have to deal with that shit. Well, out of 18, uh, it is interesting. That last one was kind of unrelated to all the others, I think, though. So I'm going to give it a 17. I'll say 15. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, I have a good te list of texts here. It's, oh, no, it, that one's gone. Shit. Oh, well. How can I remove it from here without... I don't know how to remove it from my fucking thing. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. Well, I do have more facts. I have 20 interesting facts about animals that you've not heard. So there's a, more facts, but it's all about animals. Let's see. Number one, okay. the, um, the, uh, the jellyfish Nutricula is the only immortal living creature on the planet. All right. Yeah, these things, they, they just, unless something eats them or something, they just continue living. They, they don't die from old age. Uh, number two, Chow Chow is the only dog that doesn't have a pink tongue. There's a picture. Uh, Apparently their tongues are purple. Oh, I know those dogs. My, uh, I had a neighbor who had one. They get huge. They, they look huge, but they're all fluff. Like, they're, they're, they're wrinkly. Yeah. yeah. They're floofy. Yeah. They also have really deep barks. You're like, oh, oh, yeah. oh. I just looked around to see if Gibbs looked up at that. He didn't. Number three, a unique pink... Oh. Stop, stop. A unique pink dolphin dwells in the Amazon River. I got a picture of it, and it is pink as fuck. <laughs> All right. Looks like an inside-out dolphin, you know? Uh, number four, ants never sleep. I could have gone without knowing that, to be honest. That kind of... That, I guarantee somebody's going to listen to them and be like, well, I ain't sleeping tonight. Yeah, that's... that's, that's uh, well, neither are the ants. Uh, number five, uh, At Atticus Atlas is the biggest butterfly in the world. The span of its wings reaches 30 centimeters. That That is entirely too big for a fucking bug. I'm looking at a picture of this thing, and this is, I mean, this thing is Vivalon. It's, it's gigantic. Uh, number six, lobsters have blue blood. I mean, anybody who's ever cooked them knows that. Yep. Number seven. Oh, this one's bullshit. I think the whole list might be bullshit. Because it says sharks are never sick. Um, I've heard that one before. Sharks can absolutely get sick. There used to be, as a matter of fact, the reason that so many shark species are uh, on the brink of being extinct is because uh, a lot of people think that sharks can't get cancer, so they start hunting the sharks and, like, 
you know, eating them or whatever, thinking that it's going to cure their cancer. Sharks can absolutely get sick. Hey, no more Sharknado movies. <laughs> uh, so now that that kind of calls into question the whole thing, because I know for a fact that sharks can get sick. Uh, number eight, the weight of the blue whale's tongue is about the same as the weight of an elephant. That's a, that's a I can probably tongue. believe that. Uh, number nine, the killing of a panda is punishable by death in China. I believe that. They kill you for anything over there. Oh, you kill, by, you kill panda. He's the expression of non rights at them, and you're going to die because of it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, I tell you, man, and I kill you. I kill you because you kill my panda. My pet panda. <laughs> you guys, he's trying to sound Chinese, but that... I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's just me being a dick. Just ignore it. <laughs> oh, my God. You sound like, cool. you I, I don't even want to say what you sound like. I'll tell you later. Uh, number 10. Glass, one of the most unusual butterflies. Its singularity lies in the fact that its wings are transparent. That's actually... It, it looks really cool. Like there's a picture of this butterfly sitting on a leaf, and there's parts of its butterf of its wings where you could see through it, and you see the leaf. Cool. That'd be trippy to see in real life. Number eleven on Earth, there are about three unique white rhinoceroses. Each of them is protected. Well, are they Albino gonna or what? Albino rhinos. <laughs> number twelve. The number of hedgehog needles reaches about ten thousand. That's why Sonic only has about six, because he's fast as fuck, right? Well, also, hedgehogs ain't really that fast either. Nah, they're, they're, they're kind of slow as fuck, actually. Number 13, badgers pass their burrows into inheritance to their descendants. No, how does that work? What? You think a badger goes to, like, a badger lawyer and comes up with a will? I don't think so. I don't know. That's dumb. Number 14, fish stone is the most poisonous fish. I, I feel like it's a setup to a joke. Like somebody's going to be in the background going, how poisonous is it? Well, let's find out. Number 15, that's not. Sheep can remember people's faces. Okay. I'm kind of rushing through this because I'm, I'm thinking this whole thing's kind of dumb at this point. Number 16, an amazing kind of dove is a crowned pigeon. Well, what the fuck makes it amazing? Uh, it's derpiness. Probably. Number 17, the smallest fish in the world is called Patacrypus progentica, and it's only 8 millimeters long. See, that's interesting. That's fucking tiny. That's what she said. <laughs> Number 18, the ugliest fish in the world was a drop fish, although in my opinion it is very nice. So suddenly this list has an opinion? I think it's ugly. It looks like, um, it looks like an enemy in like a Half-Life game. So, shoot it. Just awful looking. Number 19, Mollusk Hellscap Vampire is considered by scientists to be the most mysterious creature on the planet because these mollusks live at great depths and only meet and, and met... Oh, what? And met only a couple of times? Met what? A couple of times. All right, well, here's the last one. Number 20, the Japanese salamander to date is the largest amphibian when it can reach 160 centimeters in length. All right, what do you, what do you think? Out of 20, I think this was fucking dumb. Uh, I do not know. I don't know. No, no, seriously, out of 20, what do you say? Uh, I'll say 10, half and half. I'll say 5. All right, well, uh, this is a different kind of list. This is a 17 shocking employee confessions from places that you probably visit frequently. Ooh, let's hear the... I bet you anything something from Walmart is going to be up there. Well, let me scroll down through it real quick and see. No Walmart. Oh, well. Call it. All right, number one is for KFC. Ooh. At KFC, we used the leftover chicken at night for the pulled barbecue chicken sandwiches the next day. We would have to hand debone every piece of chicken that was left over, so usually the last hour we were open, we would give the customers as much chicken as we could without management seeing it. That's yeah. disturbing. You might want to go to KFC late at night, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that they do that, though, with the barbecue chicken. Like, basically, the barbecue chicken is, like, just leftover shit that they didn't sell. 
Uh, number two, this is for Commonwealth Bank. I work for Commonwealth Bank. We go crazy most afternoons and throw food, lollipops, and money at each other. It gets so bad that I would love to be the security team watching the live feed on a daily ba basis. We also internal mail things to other branches that are stuffed with rubbish and taped completely. That actually sounds like a lot of fun. It does sound fun. I would work there. Number three, this one's for Amazon. There's actually two of them for Amazon. No, no, it's not Ooh. two. It's just it not. There's only one. It's just in in two paragraphs. Amazon's customer service is so dedicated to customer service that if you reported packages not, as not delivered, we are obligated to believe you. Carriers drop packages all the time on the doorsteps or in front of doors constantly, so this happens all the time. So you want an additional item for free? Report it as undelivered. Customers get a free trial of Amazon Prime every year on the month they signed up for it. You can actually take advantage of basic Amazon customer service by not ordering anything and just watching Amazon Instant Video for a month because they cannot see that activity. Once the month expires, you can ask for another month because you weren't aware that you signed up for, for it and are interested in the service, and they will extend it for you unless you get a cranky person. Huh. That's interesting. Hey, where's I gotta try that next time. I do a uh, I got by a GPS this week, so I'll try it then. <laughs> Tell him, I didn't get my fucking GPS. You'll get two. Kind of need it. Yeah, but if you're gonna do that, make sure you do it to Amazon and not like some poor schmuck that sells on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, number four. This is for Geek Squad. There actually is two of these. So the first person says, "At my Geek Squad store, employees were encouraged to restore computers to factory defaults for every client." It was much easier and more standard than manually removing a virus, but the kicker is they charge $100 to back up your files, so back up anything important at home before you go. And the other person says, Former Geek Squad employee, Best Buy slash Geek Squad was sued many times over for snooping through personal files on people's computers that were checked in with us. It didn't stop people from doing it. Don't leave nudes on your computer. We will find them. I believe it. <laughs> I would, I, just like, my... I would just, like, leave the most obnoxious, like, taint shot, like, right in a really obvious folder for them. So that'd be, like, the first thing they see. It might discourage them from looking further, you know? I put it on the I put on the background of my buddy's laptop a few years back. I put on his background a penetration train oh, of nothing God. but dudes. Oh, that's fucking... He had to dig more. Oh, he was it. he was pissed when he brought it into uh to Best Buy because he had locked himself out and he needed a Windows 10 thing and they were able to crack it with all the files intact. And oh, as God. soon as it loads up, you see five guys. Oh, they're God. dicks in each other's buttholes and they're all just looking at each other. And I'm just sitting there laughing my ass off. Wait, wait, did he know it was you or did he think that they did it? <laughs> I don't know. I just know I'm sitting there laughing my ass off, and then I got my ass kicked later. <laughs> oh, well, then he knew it was you. <laughs> I would have been like, whoa, dude, they fuck with your computer. <laughs> All right, number five. This one's for Hobby Lobby. Uh, most items in the store go on sale for 50% off or 30% off at some point, except for the hobby and cards and party department as well as specific items in each department, especially if you're buying home accents. If you don't see something on sale, ask if the if the item ever does go on sale, most employees will tell you when it will go on sale. Do not buy any glass, metal, ceramic, or poly resin items from Home Accents if they are not on sale. They are our most expensive item and they go on sale every other week. Do not buy seasonal items when they're at full price. They will go 40% off and eventually 66%, 80%, and 90% off, usually a couple of weeks after we get them. Well, so you get some great savings on some bullshit that no one wants. <laughs> like really? Like I don't mean to I don't mean to shame people for their hobbies, but come on, come up with something better than that. All right, number six. Uh, this is for Michaels. Uh, I worked at Michaels for a while. At the end of every season, spring, summer, fall, winter, all leftover seasonal items like fake flowers, decorations, scrapbook scrapbooking stuff are trashed in the dumpster behind the store. Though technically it is trespassing, I used to see people dumpster diving all the time. Usually we just ask them to leave, but the dumpster is basically a gold mine filled with thousands of dollars of merch for the brave willing to dig around. You ever been to GameStop dumpster diving? I've seen it a lot on YouTube, and I mean, it is legal. As um, The only time that it becomes illegal is if you... Uh, you know, if you break into it, or like if it's locked, you 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 can't go in there. But if it's like left out, unlocked, you you're actually fully legal to get in there. 
Uh, maybe I shouldn't confess then. <laughs> well, yeah, don't. Number seven, this one's for Bath & Body Works. Um, I used to work at Bath & Body Works. They are the sister companies with Express and Victoria's Secret. You can shoplift virtually anything from their stores. There are no cameras and no detectors. Also, most of their coupons that free lotion with any purchase, etc., can be applied to anything. There is no minimum purchase. So if you purchase one of their dollar gift boxes and the full-size lotion, you will only pay for the gift box and still get the lotion for free. It puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets theft again. Why did you sound like Austrian when you did that? I have no idea. It puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose. I don't think I want to answer that. Number eight. This is for Hooters. Um, Ooh. I was a cook at Hooters. Some of the girls that work there are extremely unhygienic. Once I was in doing prep work and two of the girls rolled in their previous night's attire, used wet paper towels to basically freshen up whilst changing in front of the kitchen staff, then served all day. Also, count your wings. Sometimes we toss in the sauce too vigorously and we launch one and you get 49 instead of 50. I've had that done before and it sucks. Who's going to sit there counting 50 wings? Me. Okay, fair enough. I'm glad you got time for that. I'm just like chicken. I count the bones afterwards, just in case I'm still hungry. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> this is for Ma Major? I don't think I've ever heard of this place. Employees can physically watch you take something off the shelf and walk out the door without paying, but are not allowed to say or do anything to stop you. Our protocol is to notify a manager, who is then supposed to notify loss prevention. Our managers are so overworked and hate their jobs so much that that never happens. I once saw a man walk out of the store with a television. The only items we give a rat's ass about keeping frozen is ice cream. During third shift stocking, boxes of frozen food will sit out for four to eight hours at a time. Jesus Christ. Products for 10, t for t eh, products for 10 for 10 sales are usually selected based on the warehouse supplies. Often we have a ton of product in our warehouses that isn't selling and needs to be moved. Throw on a 10 for 10 and people go bonkers. Those products usually have been uh, in the warehouse for over a week and are shipped to the store covered in fecal matter from rodents. We once got a skid of cereal that had to be scanned entirely as a loss due to rodent damage. Well, you know, the takeaway from this is I've never heard of Major, but don't shop there. Yeah. I don't know. Never heard of that one. Uh, this is for Babies R Us. It says, if you have a baby registry with us and you bring store items from it to the register and ask to return them using your registry, we can't really do anything about it if you're not caught on camera taking the items. People have walked out the door with thousands of dollars in cash this way. Jeez. No wonder they went out of business. I was just about to say exactly that. Uh, this one's for Delta Airlines. Uh, this is number 11, by the way. We have to get on our knees and load your bag between 100 to 200 others in the belly of an aircraft that is only 4 feet high and 30 feet long with only two people. It is going to be thrown hard to make sure it gets from the guy at the door to the guy stacking. I don't care what labels or fragile stickers are on it. The only thing I go out of my way to take care of is instruments. Shit. Damn. Uh, don't fly Delta, kids. Number 12, this is for Godiva. I worked at Godiva for a while in three locations. Don't buy anything fresh dipped, especially the fruit, especially if it has more chocolate than normal. I have seen people scrape mold off and dip the fruit anyway. I have seen things fall on the floor and picked up and re-dipped. You can't tell under all the chocolate. Bonus, the shakes are just powder mixes, not worth $6, trust me. They are also Whoa. about 1,000 calories and up each. Good thing I've never heard of this place. You've never heard of Godiva chocolate? Uh, I'm sure I've heard of it, but I've never eaten it. Yeah. Well, they, they sell it in stores, too, but they also will have, like, their own, like, store. Like, usually in a corner shop in a mall, and they have, like, chocolate that costs way too much money when you can get a Hershey bar across the street. Oh, that's probably why, because I don't overpay for chocolate. Yeah, it's, you know. Number 13, uh, this is for Pizza Shop. Worked at a mom-and-pop pizza store when customers routinely ordered right before closing or didn't tip. I would roll down my windows, take their food out of the pizza bag, and hold it out of the window to make it cold. In the summer, I cranked up the AC and held it by the vent. Well, I mean, Gee. look, I can agree with doing that to people who don't tip, but just because people are ordering right before closing, you're still open, right? That's a dick move. 
All it's right. more in a dick move. That just ain't right. Yeah, that ain't right. This is for Ben and Jerry's. Uh, we're trained to slight scoop you, to fluff it up, to make it seem like a whole lot while not really giving you a lot. So for that $4 a scoop, you get, well, not a lot. I was the only one to wash my hands when returning from the bathroom when serving ice cream to guests at my location. I also was the only one to make sure my hair was pulled back. Yes, there were hairs in the ice cream. Ew. Wonderful. Ah, uh, well. Number 15, this is for UPS. Your UPS person is timed to the minute. Most residential stops are given a three-minute allowance for the truck to be stopped, unbuckle, open the door, find the package, come to your door, knock or ring, and then leave the package or leave a note, and lastly, to get back to the truck and leave. Any time spent over that can result in disciplinary action for the driver. If your driver stops to talk, that's because they've made an allowance for you specifically. If your driver seems cold or quiet, they may need to, they may need to make up some time lost or they just want to get home. Your UPS driver always knows what is in your discreet package if it comes in a bag or a plastic envelope. Do not make a claim that you never received a package just to get a free item. More than likely, an investigation will begin and every package you receive will need a personal signature every time. If you really want to tip your UPS guy, give him dog treats and or gift certificates to buy new shoes. Dog treats get expensive and we need to buy shoes twice to three times a year. That makes sense, I guess. Okay, I guess that's one reason why I will not work for UPS unless I'm hauling their freight and that's it. There you go. Uh, I got two here for aquariums, just in general. Uh, the first one says, I worked in an aquarium, and at that aquarium there was a problem with the water in one of the tanks. Basically, the sea stars were dying at an incredible rate, but it was more expensive to fix the water than to keep buying sea stars, so they just let them die. That's sick. And, that the, is second, sick. and the second one says, fish do not ship well. The number of fish we would receive dead was shockingly high, especially in the summer as they were not shipped with heaters or coolers, causing the bags they were shipped in to overheat and kill the fish. Of course, in a bag with 20 fish, as soon as one or two died, the dead bodies contaminate the water, killing the other 10 fish in the same bag. It was not unusual to see several bags full of dead fish every week. That's messed up. There's got to be a better way to do it then, right? Right. Holy shit. All right, and this last one's for J.C. Penny. At JCPenney, employees at my store location are allowed to wear brand name merchandise like clothes and accessories as long as they are returned to their places after clocking out. It saves us from having to buy nice clothes to work in. It also advertises products better than boring stationary mannequins. Okay. I don't really care about that. I usually wash my clothes before I buy them anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, you always should. Or after you, I buy them anyway. Aside from that, oh yeah, I mean, you're not shopping at JCPenney. But, um... You know, like, it's a, it's a good thing to do that anyway, just because you don't know how many motherfuckers tried that shit on. Hell, I could have jerked off in one of them. Ooh, I hope not. Well, um, out of, um, how many was it? It was 17. I, I, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say 15 on this one. I'll say 15 as well. That was pretty good. Interesting. i got to take that out of my saved list, and let's see what else I can do here. Get so many in here, it's just a matter of picking which ones, you know? Hmm. Yep. Ooh, this sounds good. Ten times customers just couldn't understand just how wrong they were. Oh! <laughs> you know, whatever asshole came up with the phrase, the customer is always right, should be resurrected and then shot in the face. And then pissed on. Yes, I agree. Okay, number one. I'm allergic to anchovies, so no anchovies in my Caesar salad. Uh, there's anchovies in our Caesar dressing. What would you like instead? No, there's not. I had it last week and I didn't taste them. I grind anchovies into that dressing every single day. <laughs> so they're not allergic to anchovies. You know, you don't have to make up a lie. Just say you don't want them. Exactly. Just go for it. Yeah. You know, my mother claims that she hates anchovies, but she'll, she'll put Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce on shit. And I'm like, Ma, that's that's made from anchovies. Yep. And she's like, well, it doesn't taste like them. And I'm like, Ma, it, it's it's anchovy flavored juice. It it is anchovy. Right, well, anyway. note, to, note to self, whenever I come to uh, Necro VMX's parents' house, when I bear my barbecue, make sure I leave out the Worcester. <laughs> yeah, but my mom likes it. She just claims oh. that she doesn't like anchovies. It's weird. All right. Well, number two, uh, customer. 11.50, the deal says any two-foot-long sandwiches for $12. Yeah, 
Yes, but one of the sandwiches you got had a regular price of 550, so it was cheaper. And this is ridiculous. I want to see a manager. Actually, forget it. I'm never coming back. What the fuck? Do they not realize that 1150 is less than 12 dollars? Are they that dumb? Five dollars, please. Darn, I only got seven. <laughs> Number three. That tilapia is not a real fish. I work in the seafood department of a grocery store, and I repeatedly told her that it is indeed a real fish and can be fished for. She insisted that tilapia is like the McNugget of the sea, and that it is actually just a mixture of different fish parts combined in a factory and sold in, sold in fillets. So many other dumb customers, but that one sticks out to me. Jesus. You, you absolutely probably should not eat tilapia, because it, well, first of all, it, it doesn't taste very good, you know, it's basically got no flavor. It's a bottom-feeding, garbage-eating fish that has a high mercury content. So it's basically a good idea to avoid it. But it's not like some weird Franken-food. All right, number four. Your, compu your computer you sent to me is broken. Fix it. Uh, we don't provide computers to anyone. This is company name. I got a computer from you guys to use for school two weeks ago. Give me a new one now. Where did you get it from? You. What was the company's name? My God, you're so annoying. I got it from different company name. Well, you'll want to contact them. This is company name, and we don't provide computers. Brief silence. This is your fault. Hangs up. What was up with that? Somebody had a wild hair in their ass, huh? Something like that, yeah. It's like, what? All right, number five. I made lentil soup for the kitchen I worked in as a teen, but I put carrots in later than I should have, so they still had a slight crunch when the first customer bought a cup. He stormed back in after a few minutes and demanded his money back because he was going to get food poisoning from eating an uncooked carrot. What? I mean, you could eat raw carrots. That, I mean, they're often in salads and shit like that, so I don't know what yeah. this guy's on about. Food poisoning. Number six, I worked in inbound sales at a call center once, and we had a customer ask to pay cash over the phone. I thought they were joking, and I said, yeah, just send it right through your receiver. There was a pause, and then I hear, no, seriously, how do I pay cash over the phone? <laughs> well, you, <laughs> if you can't figure it out, maybe it's not a thing. Okay, number seven, can I keep these indoor plants outside? Well, they're tropical plants, and we live in Canada, so they would be fine for summer, but you would need to bring them inside during fall and winter. Okay, but what will happen if I just leave them outside for the winter? They will die. Okay, but what can I do to keep them alive? <laughs> wow. Something tells me that went on and on and on. Just one of those things where it's like, I don't think I should buy these because they're going to die. <laughs> Number eight. When the Nintendo DS was released with the brain training games, we had several middle-aged and older customers come in to buy the game, but didn't own the Nintendo DS. No, I don't, uh -oh. want, no, I don't want the Nintendo thing, I just want the game. I started asking, what color DS do you have, to find out. After confirming she didn't own a DS, one lady told me, I used to work in sales, I know you're trying to upsell, it's not going to work. Most of the time, they thought they could put it in their computer somewhere or ask their children for help. Yeah, sounds like, like, sounds like something I would have to explain to my grandma. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Well, not my grandma in particular, but I, I've known older people like that, that. They don't get it, you know? Like, you need the thing. Like, what are you going to put it in? It, you can't just, like, put it in your fucking disk drive and your computer. It's a little tiny card. All right, number nine. The ice disp... <laughs> The ice dispenser broke at the fast food joint I used to work at. As a temporary fix, while we waited for the repair guy to come, we took to, to come to take a look at it. We set out a giant serving bowl full of ice with tongs so people could still ice their drinks. After about ten minutes after putting in the, the out the ice bowl, a customer comes up to me to complain that the machine isn't dispensing ice. I tell him we know a repair guy was called, but he's not here yet. In the meantime, there's a bowl next to the soda fountain so you can still get ice. The guy immediately gets an attitude about it. How do I know that ice hasn't been sitting out there all day? I stare at him for a few seconds before saying, because it's still solid. If left, <laughs> if left out at room temperature, old ice would just be water. I want to speak to your manager. 
Maybe they should invest in a Yeti cooler. You know, <laughs> and when they do that, like, I want to speak to your manager, they're just going to say the same exact thing. I don't know why people bother. Because some people just want to argue. You know, I had a job at a Wendy's a long, long time ago, and I was 17, and I'll tell you, um, we had this one person come in, this woman. You know you know how Wendy's used to have, like, the salad bar? Yeah. Yeah, we had that. It was, it was in the 90s, you know, 1999 to be exact. And um, I tell you, man, we had this one woman come in, and she was like, um, do you have any more noodles or some shit? And I was like, you know, uh, let me look. And I went back, and I said, do we have any more noodles for the salad bar? And they were like, nope. And I came back, and I'm like, no, we, we don't have any more noodles. And she's like, how can you not have any more noodles? And I'm like, well, because we don't have any more than that. We, that's it. And she's like, you're telling me there's no noodles in this entire Wendy's? Like, yes, that is specifically what I am telling you. Like, why is that so hard to believe? I don't know, maybe she imagined the back as like a, like the back of like a, a, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, the last scene. Yeah. And it's just boxes and boxes all filled with noodles. Our top men are working on your noodles. Yeah. <laughs> Number 10. My laptop won't turn on. Did you plug it in and charge the battery? No, this is a laptop. It doesn't need to be plugged in. Ma'am, the battery oh. still needs to be charged. Listen, this is a laptop. <laughs> oh, God. If this, reminds... was a, if, if this is call support, I would have hung up. <laughs> that reminds me of this one story I heard about someone who, who, who thought they came up with the brilliant idea for a PC that didn't need to be plugged in and you can take it with you so you wouldn't have to be tied down to, you know. And he says, so you made a laptop? And he's like, I clearly said a PC. Your CD tray is not a cup holder. Oh, my God. I remember there was this um, little program that was going around in the very early days of the Internet. And it was like this little flash thing. And it said it was from the Coca-Cola Corporation. I mean, it wasn't. But it said, uh, click here to receive a complimentary uh, cup holder, and you'd click it, and your, your CD tray would pop out. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cute. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, it's not that funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Holy shit, Baden. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, but goddamn. Well, what do you say out of ten? I'm going to say eight on that one <laughs> that last one I, that, that I said 11 the, list. the that last just, one <laughs> that wasn't part of the list I wish it was <laughs> oh my god now you got me going seven no eight <laughs> I get I don't know <laughs> He's losing it. I think I heard him say eight I don't know <laughs> Damn, son. Damn. Okay. I, I think I'm all right now. I think. I don't know. <laughs> Cup holder, huh? Okay. <laughs> Let me find another list here. Um, bu -bu 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 okay, here's one from Cracked. It's 22 times crazy ideas were the only ideas that worked. Oh, God. Let's hear it. Okay. Well, number 22, two dolphins in a Chinese zoo swallowed so much plastic that they couldn't eat. So the zoo called on the world's tallest man to reach down their throats. Bao Shinsun's, Bao Shinsun's arms are nearly three and a half feet long, so he was able to reach where the doctor's surgical tools could not. His arms also had the advantage of being flexible. Huh. I... Imagine, you know, being called up and we're like, we need you to pull a bunch of plastic out of a dolphin's stomach. And it's like, what makes you think I can do that? Well, you're really fucking tall. <laughs> All right, number 21. The Air Force needed a supercomputer but didn't have the budget, so they hooked together 1,716 Sony PlayStation 3s. The result is a massive computational mega machine known as the Condor Cluster. It costs one-tenth the cost of a traditional supercomputer. It's open source and universities are using it to build everything from artificial neural networks to models that will prove Einstein's theory of relativity. Huh. Damn, way to go PlayStation, huh? Yeah. 
Uh, number 20, soldiers in Iraq have a hard time seeing deadly trip wires, so they carry cans of silly string. Silly string will cling to hidden wires when sprayed into the air. It's not standard equipment. Uh, Marcel Shriver has organized the delivery of over 120,000 cans of the stuff to Iraq after his son was taught the technique by a group of U.S. Marines. Well, good on them. That's not even silly string. That's serious string right there. Yeah, it is. Uh, number 19. A doctor had a patient who was hiccuping at a rate of 30 per, 30 per minute for 72 hours. He finally cured them by massaging the man's butthole. No, what? Seriously. No, seriously. Hiccups are closely connected with the vagus nerve, which runs all the way from your brain to your diaphragm, and finally, near the rectum. Okay, look, I, I hate hiccups. But next time I have really bad hiccups, I don't think I can bring myself to play with my butthole. Uh, I'll pass you could on probably, that. I'll just wait for it to stop. You could probably find a woman to toss yourself for a little bit. That'll probably make it work. Well, I wouldn't care about hiccups at that point. <laughs> but I'm just saying, that's, that's really weird. Like... I wonder if the doctor knew about the vagus nerve, or he was just a pervert. Uh, let's just say yes to both. Like, maybe oh, maybe, was... maybe the guy's like, wow, doc, you cured me, and he walks out, and the next patient comes in and is like, hey, uh, so I got this really bad headache, and the doctor puts on a new pair of gloves and is like, bend over. Like that I, am shaking my, I am shaking my head to that one. <laughs> <laughs> one treatment <laughs> only. <laughs> All right, number 18. Sixth century doctors needed a way to suture wounds, so they used driver ants. An ancient medical document called the Shershruta oh Samhita documents this practice, which is still in use today in some parts of the world. The trick is to get the surgery ants angry enough to bite you and then twist off their bodies once they've latched on. How the hell do you piss them off? Blowing on them or... Telling them that they're dicks? Get bull ass to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Number 17. Uh, v v Vaginella, Italy is completely in shadow 84 days a year, so they built a giant mirror to catch the sun. The town sits in the shadow of the Italian Alps, and the surrounding mountains completely block the sun. The giant mirror is run by a computer that follows the movement of the sun to light up the center of town. That's like a reverse Mr. Burns. Something like that. Yeah. Number 16. Bengal tigers keep sneaking up on people in the Ganges Delta, so they wear masks on the back of their heads. Tiger attacks got so bad that 60 villagers a year were being ambushed by tigers as they went about their jungle-related activities, and somebody noticed that tigers don't attack people who are facing them. Bitch, I see you. I see you. I like that. I have eyes in the back of my head, motherfucker. Number 15. Tokyo had a serious problem with suicides in train stations, so they installed blue street lights. They found that blue lights reduced crime by 9%, so they decided to try their effect on suicide. Since the change to the lighting, there have been no suicide attempts. Not only is blue a calming color, but it also reminds people of police lights, so they feel like they're being watched. That's interesting. Uh, number 14, the Baltic states wanted freedom from the Soviet Union, so they joined hands and sang songs. It was 50 years after the deal that left Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania members of the USSR at the Estonian Song Festival. Residents of all three countries formed a chain 360 miles long and braced for impact. None came, and all three countries were held free elections within the year. Cool. I don't know why that's funny to me. You imagine a bunch of Eastern Europeans swaying back and forth. Can buy Number 13. Ivanhoe Reservoir needed to keep sunlight from turning its water carcinogenic, so the L.A. Department of Water covered its surface with balls. What? The problem comes when sunlight combines with chlorine and bromide falling bromate, but 400,000 black plastic balls effectively block sunlight from reaching the surface of the water. That's funny. Yeah, that was... That's a really weird solution, man. They could just put a tarp over it. They had to get like 400,000 balls. 
<laughs> Number 12. During the Korean War, the U.S. needed to respond to a violent attack, so they destroyed a tree. Two American soldiers had been axe-murdered as they tried to prune a tree that was obstructing the view between outposts. The U.S. responded with Operation Paul Bunyan, which involved sending 813 troops, including helicopters and bombers, to take the tree down. President King, Kim Il-sung apologized for the killing of the tree that, or the killing that day. <laughs> That's bizarre. It's more than bizarre, dude. I don't think I saw that episode of MASH. Uh, number 11, a California man was suffering from ulcerative colitis, so he gave himself worms. Specifically, he swallowed whipworm eggs, and in a few months his symptoms had dramatically improved. Please note that we do not recommend ingesting parasites as an alternative to medical treatment. Isn't that always the case? Yeah, yeah usually you don't want to do that. Uh, number 10. The country of Georgia had a police corruption problem, so President Sakaselvi fired all the cops. Specifically, he canned 30,000 corrupt traffic officers. It took three months to replace them, and in the interim, the situation on the roads actually improved. Gee. Maybe, they sh maybe we should do that. Do something. Just a clean slate program, right? I like that idea. Number nine, Mr. Rogers needed funding for public television, so he recited a song to the Senate. It was 1969, and Nixon had proposed cutting the PBS budget in half. Mr. Rogers calmly sat down at the Senate hearing, talked about his show, and recited the lyrics to one of his songs. In 1971, Congress raised PBS's budget from $9 million to $22 million. Well, shit. Was there anything he couldn't do? Uh, I don't know. He's on Netflix right now, so he was able to do that. Yeah, right? And they just made a movie about his life, so... All right, number eight. Dr. Julius Wagner Jaureg won a Nobel Prize for his cure for syphilis. He treated by giving the patient malaria. It's called fever therapy. The high body temperature caused by the malaria would kill the syphilis, and then once it was gone, the doctor would administer the antidote for malaria. Oh, huh. shit. That's... Sounds unpleasant, but if it works, it works, right? Yeah, to get rid of it, yeah, I think I'd risk it. Number seven, Russia has a serious problem with snow on its runways, so they clear it with jet engines. They strap MiG-17 fighter jet engines onto traditional snow plows and let them rip. Boston has recently begun to use the same solution for clearing train tracks. That is fucking awesome. Yeah, it is. That, that just sounds great. Uh, number six, Iceland is freezing cold and is covered with glaciers, so they use volcanoes to keep warm. Energy from hot volcanic rocks powers lights in homes and restaurants and provides the hot water that heats 95% of Iceland's homes. Icelanders have also built power plants fueled by steam channel through man-made geysers. Well, isn't Iceland like all hot springs? Something like that, yeah. There you go. They must have a lot of fucking lava underground. Uh, number five, psoriasis sufferers have found a new way to treat their skin. They let flesh oh, eating... What? What's the time? What's the what's the time stamp on this? I can write it. it, it oh, oh, on the record. I don't know actually, because I got to cut the intro like where we were just talking. Ah, all right. It doesn't I'll, give I'll, me the, the recording thing. Doesn't give me a time. It gives me a file size instead. So we're at about seventy three megs. <laughs> if that matters. Right. Uh, psoriasis sufferers have found a new I don't think you want this have found a new way to treat their skin they let flesh eating fish chew on them a spa in Turkey offers visitors the opportunity to sit in a warm tank full of doctor fish a minnow like species that likes to munch on dead skin the treatments cost about 3 grand and last 18 months shit I'm going to take it is your psoriasis that bad Yes, I'm my. I have ashy skin all over my shoulders and arms and on my scalp, and it sucks. I mean, have you tried cocoa butter? Cause that doesn't sound like psoriasis. That just sounds like you're an ashy motherfucker. Yeah, cocoa butter doesn't do a damn thing. Well, I mean, if you're willing to sit in a, 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 a go to Turkey and pay three thousand dollars and sitting a, a pool full of tiny fish, will eat you. Go for it. As long as it ain't piranha, we're good. No, nah, no, nah, they're like they're they're like little tiny things. It, I doubt yeah. it hurts. It probably tickles though. Uh, number four, like any country, Norway has criminals to incarcerate, so they give their prisoners tons of freedom and comfort. 
They call them residents, and they have nice rooms and amenities like a movie theater, jogging trails, and accommodations for visiting relatives. Not in spite of this, but because of this kind of treatment, Norway's recidivism rate is a third of America's. I can actually believe that. You know, I, I, I found out about that, actually, when I read the book. Um, you probably saw the movie at some point, Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. And in the, the, the movie left out a few parts, and one of the parts they really didn't go into was uh, that he went to a, a Norwegian prison. And it was right after he got out of the French prison that you saw in the beginning of the movie where he was all haggard and shit because it was basically just a box full of shit that they kept him in. Yeah. And then after that, he was extradited to Norway, and he stayed in this, this prison that was basically a hotel. And he said that, you know, he saw the pros and cons of both sides. Like with France, the prisons were so scary and so horrible, he was like absolutely frightened to ever commit a crime in France ever again. Whereas with Norway, he says it was kind of ridiculous how well he was treated, but at the same time, they were offering their criminals all sorts of education and shit so that they wouldn't want to commit crime anymore. So I guess, you know, maybe it's a mixture of both. Like, maybe you should put them in a hotel, but maybe on Sundays, beat the shit out of them. Something like that. Let them go out in the wilderness for a little while. <laughs> Number three. The city of Bulawayo has a serious sewage problem. Water rationing had caused a nasty backup in their poop pipes that caused a big stink and an even bigger health hazard. So they implemented synchronized flushing. City officials asked residents to flush their toilets at exactly the same time at three-day intervals. It worked. The pipes stay wet and unclogged now. <laughs> you imagine? Like, oh, wait, wait. It's almost five. It's time to flush. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, if it works, it works. Number two, the Kremlin doesn't want spies intercepting its communications, so they use typewriters. President Vladimir Putin recently decided to invest $15,000 on electronic typewriters for immediate use in his presidency. Unlike computers, typewriters can't be infected by surveillance bugs from Western intelligence agencies. Ancient technology does have its advantages for they the went, most part. Hey, they went low tech. I, I, I can respect it. And number one, a Nevada gym teacher stopped a school shooting. She did it by hugging the shooter. When a 14-year-old student opened fire in the school hallway, Jen C. Fagan approached the shooter, told him to drop the gun, then pulled him into a bear hug and promised not to leave him. Two students were injured in the shooting but made a full recovery. You know, I gotta say, that may have worked out one time, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, maybe, maybe the next time it's not a, a kid like that. Maybe it's a kid like Eric Harris, you know? Jeez. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. It may have worked. Um, plus, hugging is sort of a... It, it's interesting. I mean, it sounds more like she tackled him. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was really good. Out of uh, 22... I'm going to say full 22. That was really interesting. I liked it. 22 myself. There you go. The big 2-2. Two -two. Okay, Here's something uh, crazy, too. Also from Cracked, I have... Uh, 19 uh, best I met a celebrity stories. You got any? Uh, I mean, not any, not not like like what people would consider to be celebrities. I mean, mine would mostly be just like guys from bands that I like that I hung out with or whatever. You know, like I met James Labrie. That was pretty cool. Uh, does it count that I met the entire Screw Attack team and I got interviewed by him for the AVGM Blu-ray movie? No, that's actually pretty cool. So I got a ticket to go see to go see the AVGN movie yeah. in Magnolia Theater in Dallas, Texas. That result. Oh, Payton. Payton, did we lose him? I think we lost him. Shit. Um, fuck. Let's see if we can hang wait. up and call. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do we have him? Hello. Okay, now you're back. You you completely cut out right after you said you got a ticket for the AVGN movie. Oh, I, I can't help the cutouts. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. It but, doesn't happen that much. Uh, well, so I get there early. I get there at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The movie doesn't start until 8 o'clock because I expected this place to be bonkers. Yeah. Surprisingly, it was pretty tame, but at 6 o'clock, that's when it started picking up. People were coming in. They were pouring in, and the screw attack people were one of the first people there, and they sat next to me, and he's like, nice mohawk. I'm like, I look over. It's Nick from Screw Attack, the guy who... <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, Nick. He's like, you ever the ABCM movie? I'm like, yeah. He's like, want to be interviewed? I'm like, hell yeah. Nice. 
So if you got the AVGM Blu-ray and you see a big fat guy in a sleeveless red shirt wearing a hatchet man from Insane Clown Posse around his neck and a brown mohawk, that's me. That's Payton. Oh, that, that's so cool. Um, you know, it's funny. Um, I just showed that movie to my uh, my nephew because he's become obsessed with the angry video game nerd. Oh, and boy. <laughs> he, loved, he loved the movie, you know. And it's funny because um, his favorite word, he's not allowed to curse, but his favorite curse word is bullshit. Whenever I say bullshit, he giggles like crazy. So anyway, um, I showed him a few of those videos where it's like, you know what's bullshit? You know, where he's got like the bullshit mask on. Yeah. And that's the bullshit, man. So we're watching the movie, and it's like right at near the end. It's like when Death Moxus is attacking like Las Vegas, and there's this wide sweeping crowd shot. And Bobby goes, I saw him, I saw him. And I'm like, what, who did you see? And he looks at me and he goes, the cow poop guy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, way to censor yourself. But let me tell you, I'm gonna show. I'm about to send you a picture on Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger. That is, I'm gonna show you my my nephew Bobby doing his impression of the nerd. He's not allowed to give the finger, so he uses index fingers for this. But this is him doing the angry nerd face. I just sent it to you. <laughs> You're raising him right. He, he doesn't he do the the frown perfectly? Yes. All he needs even, is a fidget spinner. I can't even do that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if he was actually given the... I, I actually tweeted that at James Rolfe. He didn't answer, of course, but I was like, hey, he wants to be like you. All right, so here we are. The uh, 19 best I met a celebrity stories. Number 19, I once collected garbage from a beach with Will Smith and his family. I was on a secluded beach in Antipaxos, Greece, when the fresh Prince of Bel-Air and his family showed up on their yacht. They started picking up trash, and I offered to help. Cool. There's a picture of this guy with Will Smith and, and Jada and, and, and the daughter. I don't I don't see the son. But uh yeah, they're there. That's cool. That's the uh I gotta say Jada Smith still very hot. Just from this picture. Right. She's wearing the bikini and I'm like, mmm, that's good. Alright, number eighteen. Andrew WK after his allotted festival signing time had ended, literally stood to one side with a stack of paper and signed a personalized autograph to everyone left in everyone left in his signing queue. He was the first celebrity I'd ever met, and I now hold all celeb encounters to his standards and none none have come close. Yeah, Andrew WK is a really a really chill dude too. Like he loves partying, but he also loves the interaction more than anything. Like I've never seen a guy like, he'll be singing his music, and after he gets done playing his piano, he'll jump into the crowd and just start singing, and, you know, the crowd's singing with them. And As long as he know, promises I mean, to not come to E3 anymore, I'm fine. What happened at E3? They, they had him perform uh, his song from Rage 2, and we're just like, nobody fucking cares about this. We just want to see the game, you know? And it's like he's doing his song, and he's really into it. He's giving, you know, his his performance because he doesn't sell himself short. And the audience is just sitting there like they don't care at all. Like they want this guy to get off the stage. So I kind of felt bad for him, you know. Oh, that sucks. That that honestly does kind of suck. I never understood bringing celebrities to E3 like that unless they have something to do with the game. You know, I know, I get he did a song for it, but the song was already in the trailer. You didn't need to have him, or you maybe it would have been cool if they had the trailer playing while he performed it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that would actually be kind of cool. That actually, would have been cool. But they didn't, they didn't do that. They had him play the whole song, and then they showed the trailer for Rage Two, which looks great, by the way. Even though I think it looks way different from the first one, but um. But then the song was in the trailer, too, so it's like you had to listen to it twice. I think the song was called Get Ready to Die. Um, but, it, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'll, I'll interested in the game, but I felt bad. Like I said, nobody was into it. Like There was, like, you look in the audience, they do the audience shot, and there'd be, like, one guy clapping, you know? Oh, that sucks. Yeah. And he uh, deserves so much better. Like I said, they bring out some weird celebrities at E3. Like, I think the only time that it, it, it made sense was... Um, they brought out Ice Ice T to talk about. At first, I'm like, "What the hell is Ice T doing on stage?" And it was for like Gears of War three or four or something like that. It was one of the Gears games. And instead of you know like performing or talking or anything, he just stands there and they hand him a controller and he plays the game. And it turns out Ice T is really good at video games. 
Got to be better than Mike Tyson. Wow. I mean, when you've been beating head that many times. I've seen he lost to Glass plus. Joe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the problem with Mike Tyson playing Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is they didn't explain anything to him. They just gave him the controller and expected him to know what to do. Well, the game's been out for 30 years. You'd think he would have picked no, up an he's, NES controller at some point in his life. He's not a gamer. He, he's not a gamer. He was just mashing the buttons. And When you think about it, Punch-Out is really a puzzle game. It is. It's all about timing. And mm-hmm. my friend, uh, the Ultimate Gamer 07, was at Phoenix Con a few months ago. And, you know, out of everybody, like, you know, all these new people were coming up and trying to play. They couldn't get past Glass Joe. He comes out of nowhere, and he gets all the way to Mike Tyson. And <laughs> uh, Number 17, I once smoked weed with Nickelback. It was after a show in my hometown before they were famous. That's that's not a very good story. Uh, if, we're, if we're bringing music into it, I did a uh, Crown with Cola shots with Fabio Leone of Rhapsody of Fire. That's way cooler than smoking weed with Nickelback before they were anybody. Like, who cares? All right, number 16. Uh, Richard Stallman, notoriously paranoid programming genius, gave a speech about data privacy at my college. In the speech, he accused all cell phone owners of forfeiting their privacy rights. Later, at the conclusion of a campus tour I led, he asked to borrow my cell phone so he could let his driver know he was ready to be picked up. Oh, that's messed up. (laughs) Well, at least he lives by it. He doesn't have a cell phone, right? Yeah. That's so ridiculous. Uh, Number 15. One rainy day in Manhattan, someone walking very fast, head down, slammed into me before I can get out of the way. It was supermodel Christy Turlington. Even though she had cut my arm with her umbrella, she turned, glared at me, and then scurried away. Oh, boy. What a bitch. That reminds me, my uh, same thing happened to my dad, except it was actually... um, Al Pacino that slammed into him. Ooh. And uh, and and he didn't. He wasn't an asshole about it. He said he 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 actually because my dad you know is a big guy or at least was a big guy before he had cancer. And Al Pacino, I don't know if you can tell from the movies, but he's he's not big. He's a little guy. So yeah, he's he like five six, five seven. Yeah, he he slammed into my dad. He fell down. So my dad technically knocked over Al Pacino. Al Pacino got up, brushed himself off, said sorry, and then rushed off somewhere. I guess he was in a hurry. Well, good on him for not, like, oh, Being a not going all aggro on him. Yeah. Uh, number 14, when I was eight, I was in St. Louis at my older brother's baseball tournament. During one game, I was playing with a tennis ball until it rolled under a man's chair. When the man turned to give the ball back, my eight-year-old self immediately realized he was the guy from Dumb and Dumber that wasn't Jim Carrey. No one believed me until later that day when tons of people had surrounded him while waiting to get his autograph. Jeff Daniels had been there to watch his son play in the tournament. Aw, oh, good on Jeff Daniels. I could understand why people wouldn't recognize him. I, if you've seen Jeff Daniels recently, he, he gained like a ton of weight. Yeah? I mean, he's still like in the face. You could still tell it's Jeff Daniels, but he, he blew up. I don't know what, like it's a thyroid problem or what, but wow. Uh, Number 13, I met Ansel Elgort while he was on a trip to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. He was surrounded by fans at the time. I shouted, OK, a famous movie line from The Fault in Our Stars at him from the back of the crowd, not expecting a response from him. He turned around, looked at me, smiling, and replied, OK. I have no idea who this guy is, but all right. Okie dokie. Uh, number 12, I got to meet Ronnie James Dio after a concert. The band was joking around, so I thought I'd be funny and do the bunny ears for my pick with Ronnie. I guess he didn't appreciate the humor because he made a stupid face and muttered, do that crap next time and I'll ruin your picture. <laughs> and, and the person who, who posted this included the picture where he's got the bunny ears behind Dio, and Dio is indeed making a really dumb face at the camera. I don't blame. I'd be making a dumb face too. That's like, like if that's a if that's like your fifth picture with them, then yeah, make a funny face. But I mean, you look at me. I've I've done photos with Camelot for the last eight years, and every single time I'm serious. Yeah, but I think my yeah, you're not about to throw the bunny ears up behind their heads. That's so stupid. Hell no! All I do is flip up the devil sign and say, "Yeah, yeah rock and roll." You know, t- to be fair, the kid in this picture looks like he's about 14 years old. So. Okay. That's probably why he thought that would be good. All right, number 11. Back in the 90s, my friends and I went out for a burrito one day after an Ice Cube concert. We were excited to notice that he was right in front of us in line. We asked him in the nerdiest voice possible, How was the concert, Mr. Cube? 
he was not amused. I don't blame him. I've what heard the it's fuck? notoriously. What the fuck you motherfuckers doing? I've heard it's notoriously difficult to get Ice Cube to laugh. Did How the hell they got him to laugh for uh, for next Friday is beyond me. <laughs> well, he he wrote those movies, so he finds them funny. Of course. But uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, number ten. Conan O'Brien visited my elementary school. Apparently, he had attended college with my teacher. I didn't know who he was at the time, but I remember him telling us that we'd think this was cool when we got older. <laughs> He's right, too. I can yeah. see Conan doing that. Like, trust me, when you're older, you'll think this is very cool. Hey, my teacher knew Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Number nine, the best reaction I ever got to having a spell my name... Ugh, let's try this again. The best reaction I ever got to having to spell my name for someone was from the late, great John Hurt. Who should I make this out to? John, J-O-N. J-O-N? Yes, I'm one of those awkward Johns. He laughs and says, aren't you just? Not everyone can say they were zinged by a two-time Oscar nominee. <laughs> All right, number eight. My car was once stopped by the Secret Service as the Dalai Lama crossed the street in front of me. My friends and I rolled down the windows and sang, Hello, Dolly. <laughs> He smiled at us, but the security guys didn't find us at all funny. Security guys have no sense of humor. They're not supposed to. They're, not They're just there. To... That's like that's like they... you know go, that's like what Howard Stern's always yelling at Ronnie about. He's like like Ronnie, stop trying to be a character and just be security. You know. Too late for that. He already has anal sex with fucking uh, those freaking real dolls. Oh God. Well, yeah, well, uh, uh, so did Howard and Fred. So well, the. Uh, Fred did the, the, the vagina and, and I think Howard had the doll blow him, right? Something like that. And you know, it tells you, you know, like what a, what a, what a shill Howard was even back in the day because I remember he gave them the real doll people a testimonial where he said it was the best sex he ever had. They put the quote on their website and everything and like two days later on the show they were talking about how it was the dumbest fucking thing they've ever done. <laughs> But if they heard him say it, if they got the recording yeah, of it, yeah. they knew. Well, you know. Number seven, when I was 13, I sold Ryan Stiles a Christmas tree. At first, I commented on how much he looked like Ryan Stiles. He showed me his ID to prove it was him and was shocked to have such a young fan. Ain't nothing shocking about that. Yeah, I mean, he probably, like, watched him on either the Drew Carey show or, you know, whose line is it anyway, so. And <laughs> and number... I'm the same person. Number six, a few years ago, some co-workers and I went out to dinner after work only to stumble upon a very drunken Rip Torn just going to town on some oysters. We chatted a little bit, and one of my companions picked up Rip's check so he could say he'd bought dinner for a celebrity. You know, I can't imagine that you'd ever run into a wild Rip Torn and he wasn't drunk and scarfing down oysters. <laughs> I assume that's what he does all the time. Hell yeah, that's... When you're making as much money as he is, yeah. I, I wonder, is he going to be in Men in Black next year? He wasn't in the, sm the most recent one, so he I don't was, know. Yeah, I didn't actually see Men in Black 3, but the, the next one's a reboot. Oh, so he well, might I, I don't know that it's necessarily a reboot, but it's it's uh, it's an entirely new set of agents. It's like not a, a continuation. Oh. So. Well, I'm Ooh. down for it, as long as it's funny, you know? But here, let me see if I can bring it up. I, I'll tell you who's in it. But um, it's coming out next year. But um, apparently, a a Emma Thompson is in it. Oh God! And uh, Chris Hemsworth. Please don't make him out to be a pussy. It's hard to make Chris Hemsworth a pussy. The guy is huge and has a, a voice like a Viking. They did it in Ghostbusters, so no, I didn't, anything I didn't, I didn't. I didn't see that. I, I should watch that one day just to form my own opinion, but I, I didn't. I didn't want to see. Sure. It. Just trust me. You're you're better off. I could so see Chris Hemsworth as a man in black, though. Well, yeah, absolutely. Can you imagine, like, the, you know, he's like, oh, it was a weather balloon, you know, from from Asgard, yes, yeah. Okay, number five. I was cosplaying Mabel Pines at a con giving stickers to people whose costumes I liked. I saw a guy dressed as George R.R. R. Martin slapped a sticker on his shoulder and ran away. Only I found out later he was the real deal. 
Oh, shit! Well, you didn't technically meet a celebrity. You just gave him a sticker and ran away like a weirdo. Oh, well, that sounds normal. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, number four. So I met Matthew Modine back in 2012, way before he played Dr. Brenner on Stranger Things. When I asked him for a picture, he looked at me and just plain said no. Then after a few seconds of awkward silence, he burst out laughing, pulled me next to him, and said he was kidding. <laughs> Good on him. That's funny. All right. Number three, I met Arnold Schwarzenegger at an exclusive black tie event while wearing a pair of high-quality cowboy boots. Arnold complimented me on my boots and jokingly scolded me for not wearing a cowboy hat. I now wear a cowboy hat. When Arnold Schwarzenegger tells you to do something, you drop everything and you, you do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Arnold's a very funny guy. I heard another uh, story where apparently somebody found themselves golfing with him. And uh, and he says, So, when was your first blow job? And the guy is like, uh, I was 15. And he goes, How did it taste? I think... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You just got it. <laughs> that was the sound of Peyton getting the joke. Isn't that always the funny part when I don't when something goes over my head and then it, I but then, but get, then you it. get it a second later like oh, how did it taste? So basically, he was calling him a fruit. Well, that's, that's Schwarzenegger for you. Uh, number two, my brother used to work for the Houston Rockets and became good friends with Charles Barkley. Following a game one night, my family met up with Barkley at a hotel bar. Sir Charles picked up the tab for everyone. I thanked him profusely, and he replied, "That's no problem. I'll just fuck your brother up the ass later on." <laughs> Well, that that I mean, escalated he has, quickly. He has always been hilarious to me. I've I've always heard that he's like the nicest guy too. Oh, and number one. After a show, in, after a show in Metallica's Justice Tour, a friend of mine and I hung around the loading area after the show until the band came out. I brought my classical guitar along, hoping one of them would autograph it. I was thrilled when Kirk Hammett played it, and then all four of them signed it. Of course, I retired the guitar after that. It stays in its case with the same strings from that night. And he's yeah. got several pictures of that going down in this post. Hell yeah, that's, 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 that's the good shit right there. That's a keepsake forever right there. That's something you frame in glass and hang it on your wall, and you yeah. don't touch it ever. You maybe maybe you you worship it every once in a while. Oh, that's funny. I love that they actually played it a little too. That that's that's so cool. That that Kirk. I wonder what he played though. Since it's a classical guitar, I imagine he might have played like the intro to Fade to Black or something. I don't know. We'll f he should have got. He should have put that down. It might be like, I wonder what song he played. Yeah, well. Or he could have just done a basic rift on it. Yeah, maybe maybe he just uh, maybe he just played like two notes. Who knows? But uh, there you go. Um, out of nineteen, I this was highly entertaining, except for that Nickelback one. That was lame. So I'm gonna give it an eighteen. Eighteen. 18. <laughs> What's with okay. our ties today? <laughs> okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more here, and then we'll uh, okay. we'll call it a day. Um, uh, this is also kind of a celebrity thing, except it's 16 recent celebrity scandals that flew under the radar. Ooh. Interesting. Okay, so number 15, Bruno Mars was arrested in 2010 in Vegas for felony cocaine possession. The charges were only dismissed after the singer paid a $2,000 fine, went through eight hours of counseling, and completed 200 hours of community service. <laughs> Yo, all right. I just say, if that was like, if that wasn't Bruno Mars, if that was like you know, like, Bruno Smith, dude would have been in jail for 10 years. At least. So that, that just shows you how they get preferential treatment sometimes. Uh, number 14, in April of 2016, Cat Williams was arrested for battery after allegedly throwing a salt shaker at a seafood restaurant manager's mouth. Williams apparently realized he didn't even want fish and was apprehended a short time later at the Waffle House. Ah, uh, first that fight with that stupid kid, and now this. Yeah, well, seems like an angry guy, huh? Just about. Number 13, former Survivor contestant Michael Scoopin, whom you might recognize as the guy who acquired severe burns on his hands after falling into a fire, was arrested in February 2016 on charges of larceny, racketeering, and the possession of child pornography. Ah! Jesus. 
I, I don't know if this guy counts as a celebrity, but that's that's pretty horrible. That's why it flew under the radar. Nobody knows who the guy is. God, he looks like a creep, too. Most of right, the me... people that go on Survivor are creeps. Ooh, that's true. I think you'd kind of have to be a creep to be on a show like that. Number 12, George Lopez was arrested in 2014 for public intoxication after falling asleep on a casino floor. But it's cool. The comedian explained he had tied one on and was merely trying to sleep it off. Well, at least he was honest about it. Look, i got to say, um, I don't think there should be a law against getting drunk in a casino, especially considering they're usually ramming free drinks down your throat. Like, he fell asleep on the floor. They couldn't just, like, shake him and be like, uh, sir, you need to wake up. Why don't you go to your hotel room? I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to say, hey, we arrested him. <laughs> You're probably right. Number 11, MMA fighter Jason Mayhem Miller once broke into an Orange County church. There he had spray-painted on walls, torn up books and pictures, set off a fire extinguisher, and then proceeded to fall asleep naked on a couch where he was found by police the next day. <laughs> that should be on World's Dumbest Criminals. Yeah, sounds like it. What a weird I wonder if, I wonder if Brandon Novak's going to be on this. Like he's, a, he, he's a skateboarder friend of Bam Margera. And supposedly he got high on heroin one night and broke into a gas station and, like, stole a bunch of cigarettes and beer and money. And it was snowing, and he didn't have any shoes on, so he goes back to the store, passes out on the floor, and gets arrested the next day. Beats walking through the snow, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. In 2015, Emil Hirsch was arrested for choking and dragging a female studio executive through a bar at the Sundance Film Festival. What? The actor pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 15 days in jail and given 50 hours of community service. I, I just want to say again, the guy choked a woman and dragged her through a bar, and he got 15 days in jail and some community that, service? That's it? And I don't even know who this guy is. I don't either. Amy, I gotta look him up. Emil Hirsch. Emil Hirsch. I don't even know who he is. Sounds uh, Jewish. Well, let's see who he is. Uh, he's an American actor, starred into Into the Wild and the A and E Network simulcast miniseries Bonnie and Clyde. He was, uh, uh, he's he's like a real C lister. Wonder if he's in any of the Sharknado movies. I said C list, not D list. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what's next. Number nine, on March 9th, 2016, Austin Russell, a.k.a. Chum Lee, cast member of Pawn Stars, had his house raided by police. They found crystal meth, marijuana, and several firearms. On May 23rd, 2016, Chum Lee pleaded guilty to avoid jail time. He will get counseling and three years probation. That didn't fly under the radar. I couldn't go two seconds on the Internet without hearing about that for a while. Uh, here's the thing, though. You know, he's dead now, so... Wait, what are you talking about? Chum Lee, the old, the old guy, or... Chum oh, Lee from Pawn Stars. Yeah. He's not dead. The old guy, the, the father? No, the, the the big, fat, goofy guy. Oh, that... Never mind, I'm sorry. Now, I know the old man died, uh, a, I, I think it was just, just a little while ago, actually. It was like a month ago. I got yeah. tagged all over Facebook because I'm a big fan yeah, of Pawn Stars. Yeah. No, no, Chum Lee, Chum Lee is the grandson's friend. My fault. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, number eight. Boxer Manny Paqueo took a beating in social media in February 2016 when during a television interview for his Senate candidacy, he said gay people were worse than animals. It's common sense, he says. Do you see animals mating with the same sex? Animals are better because they can distinguish male from female. If men mate with men and women mate with women, they are worse than animals. The rub of it, he still got elected to the Philippine Senate. Jeez. And by the way, he's absolutely wrong. Animals will totally get gay with each other. My cats get gay with each other. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's not even a sex thing. Sometimes it's a it's a dominance thing. But they do do it. Uh, number seven, S uh, Stephen Ranat Sisi from the league lied about being at 9/11. For 14 years, Renat Sisi talked about his experience living through 9-11 and how it inspired him to move to L.A. and chase his dreams while he could. 
When confronted with the fact that the World Trade Center office he claimed to have worked at did not exist, Ranatisi admitted that the story was complete No Man's Sky level horseshit. I like the not so subtle dig at No, Man, no Man's Sky. I have no idea who this guy is, by the way. I don't either. Who the hell is he? I'm about to look him up. He's got a hell of a he name. Sounded, Steven like Ranatisi. Okay, can I buy a fucking vowel? Who is this guy? He's a stand-up comedian. He's an actor. He was in the league. That's about it. The league. Yeah, he was in like a he had like a bit part in Paul Blart Mall Car apparently. Oh. Yeah, he he he's a he's like a real f lister. It sounds like. All right, number six. Grammy Award-winning musician D'Angelo or Michael Archer was caught soliciting an undercover prostitute in 2010. D'Angelo had been on a decade-long hiatus at the time, so the incident flew under the radar. In 2014, he released his long-awaited follow-up album, and people have all but forgotten that it ever happened. Well, be thankful, dude. I, I kind of don't care if he picks up a hooker, you know. Plus, it's, a, it's a hooker. Yeah. Uh, number five, Fear the Walking Dead star got arrested on the CBS studio lot. In May 2016, Frank Delane allegedly tried to get past a security checkpoint at the CBS backlock and then punched a guard who tried to stop him. The guards detained him with his citizen's arrest and he was later arrested for battery. The most bizarre part of the story is the fact that Fear the Walking Dead doesn't even shoot in the CBS lot. What the hell is he doing there then? <laughs> Maybe he was drunk or something. Maybe he stumbled onto the wrong set or something. Okay. <laughs> Number four, th this one, just, I don't even know who this guy is. Do you know who David O. Russell is? Nope. Apparently he's a director. This is just fucked up. David O. Russell groped his teenage transgendered niece. Hey. There's a lot wrong there. In 2011, the director inappropriately touched his niece while they were exercising at a hotel gym. She later went to the police, but Russell denied any wrongdoing and said that it was consensual. The case was quickly... How could it be consensual if she's a kid and she's your niece? Uh, can we go to the next one? <laughs> Wait, I want to find out who this guy actually is before we do that. David O. Russell. Says he's a director. I don't know what he's directed. I don't know if I've seen any of these motherfuckers' uh, movies, you know? Maybe he thought his uh, niece would be good for, for like, a porno or something. <laughs> his first movie was called Spanking the Monkey. Oh, God! Yeah. So that's, uh... He directed Flirting with Disaster, Three Kings, I Heart Huckabees, Nailed the Fighter, Silver Linings Playbook, American Hustle, Joy, and Past Forward. So I have heard of this guy's movies. I wish I could say I have. Spanking the Monkey. Spanking the Monkey. Spank the monkey sounds like a porno. No, spanking the monkey. It was yeah. back in 1994. All right, well, that I learned something about him today. <laughs> oh, shit, where's the page I was on? Oh, fuck, i got to find the tab. Oh, here we are. Number three. In 2007, then-president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, gave actor Danny Glover $18 million dollars to make a movie about Toussaint Levoture and Haiti's slave revolt. But as of May of 2016, the film still hadn't gone into production, despite Venezuela now being in an economic crisis and the government hard-pressed to import food for its own citizens, Glover has taken no steps to return those funds despite several outlets who have suggested that he do so. Damn. Kind of a bitch move from Danny Glover, huh? Something like that, yeah. Take the money and run. All right, number two. In 2014, Stephen Collins admitted that he had molested three children some 40 years prior. Well, too late to punish him now. The dude's like in his 70s. Well, yeah, but didn't that come out because he did something more recently? Yeah. So there you go. Uh, number one. In April of 2016, Vince Neil and Nicolas Cage were... We're hanging out. Vince Neil hangs out with Nicolas Cage? Wow. Um, they were hanging out in a Las Vegas casino. A woman came up to Cage to ask him for his autograph, at which point Neil allegedly grabbed the woman's hair and pulled her to the ground. After that, Cage was filmed trying to restrain his friend outside the casino, yelling, Stop this shit now, while a group of people were surrounding them. Following the incident, Neil was charged with misdemeanor battery and could face six months in prison if convicted. Jeez. Vince Neil's got some fucking problems, dude. 
A lot of them. What does he care if somebody asks Nicolas Cage for his autograph? Shit, I'd be a blind. Be like, yeah, sure, go ahead. No, what I'm saying, like, if Nick, she asked Nick Cage, but then Vince Neil beats the crap out of her. Oh. Maybe he was upset that she didn't ask him. <laughs> She's like, maybe she'd never seen Motley Crue. She don't know who he is. I don't know. Um, out of sixteen, what do you say? I'll say thirteen. That was pretty 13. good. I'm gonna say fourteen, actually. All right, I'm actually, I actually, um, I actually do have one more list I want to do. I know I said it right. was the last one, but I got one more that I want to do. It's uh, twenty-two famous stories that left out the best details. Ooh. All right, number twenty-two. We all know the stories about Honest Abe Lincoln and his log cabin. What we should have been taught is all that log splitting and cabin building made Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln incredibly strong. He was known to haul crates of stones weighing over a thousand pounds around his hometown. There are also two recorded instance, instances of Lincoln picking somebody up by the neck and tossing him aside like a doll, one of which happened while he was on the campaign trail. I can actually believe that. He was a very tall, very powerful man that I, I believe he wrestled. He, 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 you didn't want to mess with him. And he knew how to fight, too. So, uh, Number 21. In 1989, the world watched as the Berlin Wall fell. But the whole thing started by accident because an East German Politburo member mistakenly announced that travel restrictions would be lifted immediately when, in fact, they were meant to be lifted the next day. He also failed to mention that there was still supposed to be a lengthy application process. Caught between an angry mob and his angry superiors, border guard Harold Jaeger decided to open the crossing and let the mob through. And then I Good old head. I don't Good know on him. He made history. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, right. I don't know if you were born yet when that happened, but uh, they, they tore the bitch down. Oh, I see. I've seen the stock footage. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that on the news. It was incredible. They people were going ham. They were they were fucking up that wall. I don't blame them. I mean, it's like yay. Yeah, right. Number twenty. When the FBI finally captured Unabomber Ted Kaczynski, they found his manifesto against technology and figured that they had their motive. But Kaczynski really wanted gender reassignment surgery. After a bungled appointment with a psychiatrist, Kaczynski said, says he asked himself, why not really kill the psychiatrist and anyone else whom I hate? Wicked. Gee, I wonder why they didn't give you the surgery, you fucking psycho, right? Something doesn't go your way, you're like, let's blow people up. Number 19, remember all the news stories about Toyotas racing out of control? Toyota does. They recalled over 9 million cars between 2009 and 2011. But the Department of Transportation found out that there wasn't a damn thing wrong with the cars. The so-called video proof turned out to be nonsense. The final verdict was cases of acceleration had been caused by pedal misapplication, drivers mixing up the accelerator and the brake pedal. Okay, then. So a couple of people, and let's 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 be real here. Probably old people, accidentally slammed on the gas instead of the brakes, got into accidents, and this cost Toyota probably millions because they had to recall a shitload of cars. Oh, I think I hit a pothole. <laughs> How did we get up here? It's, it's Cut the kid the buffet that concrete. way. <laughs> Number 18, Machiavelli's The Prince was a how-to guide for tyranny, and to this day, unethical grabs for power are called Machiavellian. But it was satire. Niccolo Machiavelli absolutely despised the monarchy, and everything else he ever wrote advocated popular rule. The Medici family actually tortured and exiled Machiavelli for being a revolutionary. He wrote The Prince, essentially how-to guide for oppressing the masses, hoping that the ruling family would follow it, outraging the public so much that there would be a revolution. Well, that didn't go so well, now did it? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Number 17, in 1955, Rosa Parks made headlines and history when she refused to give up her seat on the bus. But Parks wasn't the first woman arrested for refusing to give her seat up to a white man. She wasn't even the first in her hometown. She was carefully chosen to be the face of the civil rights movement. The NAACP was a very smart, media-savvy organization that knew the importance of picking the right spokesperson. See, I actually read something about that from some conspirator website, though. You know, yeah, there, that's true, actually. There was another woman in that hometown, and, and, and uh, they didn't use her as the spokesperson because the, the, the other woman was kind of a bitch, from what I heard. 
Rosa <laughs> Parks is actually a nice lady, so they used her. Uh, number 16. The did it. There you go. The deadly anthrax letters that killed five people in 2001 were assumed to be the second phase of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, but despite his attempt to link the anthrax letters to Al-Qaeda, the perpetrator was likely a mentally unstable government schlub. Investigators found ample evidence pointing to Dr. Bruce Ivins, one of the scientists who actually helped out in the aftermath of the attacks. Ivins committed suicide in 2008. I can see why. I, I, I don't think I ever um, told the story on the channel, but uh, I, I worked at an office when that was happening. In, in, uh, when the anthrax shit was going around and it was it was a mail a mail office and one of the girls in the front got an envelope and opened it up and there was some white powder in there it sent everybody into a panic the whole shit was locked down they even turned off the air conditioner which really sucked because it was summer so that nothing could go through the um, the vents or anything and the, they had like the people in like the hazmat suits looking like Walter White showed up and it, it was crazy turned out to be just like a crushed up aspirin Jeez. Yeah, all that for a whole lot of nothing. I mean, we were we were trapped in. We weren't let out, you know. So like, we were looking outside, and there's like news cameras and shit. You know, it's crazy. Uh, number fifteen in two thousand four, Merck was forced to pull Vioxx off the market and pay a huge settlement for heart related side effects. The news media wrung its hands over the evils of big pharma. Okay, okay, there we go. Every once in a while, not often, it gets like extremely loud and we can't hear each other. There we go. Uh, but Vodox was incredibly effective for pain, so much so that patients ordered their supplies. Here comes the I think he's Hello? Out. Stop saying hello, I can hear you. I couldn't hear you, dude. Well, because because you, you, you got like a, like a wind tunnel effect going on there. Can't help that, dude. You know I'm on my cell. Well, okay. Well, Vioxx was incredibly effective for pain, so much so that patients hoarded their supplies when they learned of the recall, and only slightly more dangerous than aspirin. Huh. They blew it. They blew it out of proportion. It sounds like. Uh, number fourteen. Your English teacher probably convinced you that Shakespeare was a prim and proper fop who wrote elegant plays full of flowery speeches. That's not what I was taught. Uh, but Shakespeare's plays were filled with dirty jokes and crude language, and some of his plots were full-on sick. We're talking kidnapping, rape, dismemberment, murder, and cannibalism. Seriously, he was the Quentin Tarantino of his day. <laughs> I believe it. I mean, I, I can't even think of any one of his plays that wasn't kind of sick when you think about it, you know? Like, even, like, Romeo and Juliet was a... It wasn't some great romance. It was a, a three-day obsession between a 17-year-old boy and a 13-year-old girl. Uh, who died, by the way, <laughs> in the stupidest way that people can die. All right, number down, 13. Down the street, not across. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> Juliet didn't do that. She just stabbed herself in the heart. Uh, um, say, say what you will, but that's kind of a badass way to go. Uh but the reason she stabbed herself in the heart was because she thought Romeo was dead. Turns out the motherfucker was only knocked out. So. Damn it! Like, real? He's like, yeah. she probably started thinking, damn it, this prank backfired! <laughs> exactly. Okay, number 13. NBC, Fox, BBC, and even Discovery have been reporting that experts think that Nessie, or, or the Loch Ness Monster, might be dead. The Loch Ness Monster and the photos that supposedly prove its existence are a confessed hoax. For example, the surgeon's photo was debunked in 1994 when a man named Christian Sperling explained that his father-in-law, Marmaduke Weatherall, had staged the picture using a fake monster head attached to an 18-inch toy submarine. Okay, can I just point out that there's a dude named Marmaduke Weatherall? Sounds like a Disney character. That's, that's just a horrible man. No wonder he decided to make up fake monsters. All right. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> they will know the name Mamaduke Weatherall. Uh, number 12. A number of major news sources shared the story about the Denmark gym that offered naked CrossFit classes. Uh, the story had started as an April Fool's joke on the gym's website, but the hoax was so successful the gym actually did host naked classes for a while. They eventually stopped because it was getting, and I quote, 
a little too comical. You ever, uh, have you seen Super Troopers 2 yet? No, I, I haven't even seen Super Troopers 1, to be honest with you. Uh, the mayor punches a, uh, a male stripper in his dick saying, you ever done, you ever done dick bucks before? <laughs> that reminds me, um, one of my nephews was over here and he was, a, he said he was going to put on a, a show for me using his Lego toys, right? Right. So he's going through this whole elaborate thing, you know, there's bad guys, there's good guys, there's all this, you know. And I'm, I'm barely paying attention, but he, he at one point he has like this little Iron Man figure and, and this other guy, and he's making them talk, and he goes, oh, do you want to play a game? It's called Punch. And then he like, you know, has the guy hit the other guy. And I said, what about Kickball, Bobby? And he got it immediately. And decided on a uh, in-the-moment rewrite and changed it to a game of Kickball. Thwack! <laughs> Alright, number 11. In 1978, Hooker Chemical... Uh, this, they're named Hooker Chemical, wow. Hooker Chemical had to pay a steep fine and relocation fees for selling a toxic waste dump as a site for a school at Love Canal. But, despite the fact that they'd actually exceeded federal regulations with their cleanup efforts, Hooker Chemical told school officials that the site would be a horrifically bad place to build a school and refused to sell them the land. The school board threatened to seize the land by eminent domain, so Hooker finally relented and sold it to them for one dollar, with a caveat describing the chemical dump and reiterating that it would be an unbelievably stupid place to build a school. <laughs> And then they were made out to be the bad guys. Yep. That's how it goes, ain't it? Hey, it's y'all's land now. I sold it to you for one dollar. <laughs> one cheap, dollar. Least, right? Number ten. The Dark Ages were a terrible time to be alive between the disease, filth, poverty, and the Black Death. But it was also a time of unprecedented scholarship, discovery, and innovation in the Middle East. Islamic caliphs blanketed every land they conquered with schools, libraries, public works, and the most comprehensive system of social welfare on the planet. Yeah, and it, you know, that time really only sucked for Europe. Everyone else was doing okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, number nine. The documentary Wild Wilderness captured lemmings and mass suicides in action. Have you ever seen this, Peyton, or heard about it? Uh, I think I've heard of it. <laughs> so contrary to what the textbooks say, lemmings don't jump off cliffs. The documentarians found this out the hard way and wound up throwing the lemmings off the cliff to get the scene. And thence we get a PC with a shit ton of ports called Lemmings. <laughs> that was a good game, though. But, um, yeah, they, they, they thought the lemmings would just, you know, commit mass suicide because that's what everybody thought. And then when they wouldn't do it, they were like, fuck, we'll drive the motherfuckers right off a cliff. Guess who produced this documentary? Uh, Spike Lee? Yep. <laughs> no, this was back in the 60s. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no idea. It, um, uh, it was Disney. What? Yeah, it was Disney. That one's staying in the vault, you know? Oh, it's staying in the vault for a while, too, I might add. You can sit there with Song of the South and just rot, right? God. And the thing that I wish they would, I know it's racist, but come on. What, Song of the South? Well, it's not that it's a bad movie, so they don't want to be associated with that. Yeah, that sucks, because it's actually a pretty decent film. Yeah. Well, so is uh, Birth of a Nation, but, you know. <laughs> oh, and, and speaking of... Um, you mentioned uh, Spike Lee. He's got a movie that's coming out called Black Klansman. Oh, I saw the trailer for that while I was picking up my car. I was like, holy shit, this I, guy's I just, actually... I just saw the trailer last night. I laughed my ass off. I'm like, I, I'm going to have to see this. That looks really funny. This is good. It, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. All right, number eight. When Houston Rockets power forward Charles Barkley tossed a man who had thrown a glass of ice in his face through a first floor window, it made headline news. When asked by a judge if he had any regrets, Barkley answered, I regret we weren't on a higher floor. Ouch. <laughs> well, you know, the guy threw a glass of ice on his on his face. That's fucking rude. Of course it is. Uh, who does that? An uh, asshole. I, I regret we weren't on a higher floor. I love it. Okay. 
Number seven, the history books teach that the Columbus uh, that Columbus had trouble finding backers because nobody believed the world was round. But Pythagoras had pretty much settled the flat Earth thing two thousand years before Columbus's time. The navigational techniques used in Columbus's day were actually based on the fact that the Earth is a sphere. The reason that Columbus had trouble finding backers was that he had grossly underestimated the size of the Earth and stood absolutely no chance of reaching Asia, and everybody knew it. Well, it took 30 days to get over here. <laughs> well, you know, it's yeah, funny. Well, yeah, well, you know, I remember I was taught that um, in college, actually, they told me about it. And they said that basically Columbus was thinking was thinking baseball, not basketball, in terms of size. Right. So he thought he'd be, like, on the seas for a week, and then his ass would be in India. All right, number six. In 2003, the space shuttle Columbia was destroyed while trying to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. The story dominated the news cycle, and scientists scrambled to figure out what happened. The same flaw that caused the destruction of Columbia happened again just two years later to Discovery. Insulating foam came loose during launch and hit the wing. Fortunately for Discovery, the crew was able to do an inspection and learn that the damage wasn't critical. Well, good on Discovery. Still sucks for Columbia, though. Yeah... Yeah, number five. In 2002, BBC named Winston Churchill the greatest Briton ever. He is credited with turning the tide against the Nazis and shepherding the end of World War II. But within two months of the Nazi surrender, Churchill was booted out of office. The problem was Churchill really, really loved war. Even while the peace agreement was being finalized, he was planning to invade Russia. Oh, because that worked out so well for the Germans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. He, he saw firsthand what happened to Germany after they invaded Russia. And then he was going to try it. No, what a dumb fucker. All right, number four. In 2011, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reported that the Chevy Volt lithium battery would catch fire in a 20 miles per hour collision. But if you smacked into the Volt at just the right spot, and then flipped it at just the right speed, the battery would indeed catch fire three weeks later. Fun! Well, I gotta say, that's actually kind of scarier, because it's like three weeks later, and then all of a sudden it bursts into flames, right? Yeah. All right, number three. Sites like Business Insider and Newsweek recently revealed the existence of a series of 17 fake interceptor cell towers scattered across the country. To bring their point home, they showed photos of cell towers. But the towers referenced by the article aren't physical towers. They're intercepting devices that could fit into your backpack like computers and radios. So they just used a bad graphic and people got the wrong idea, thinking that, you know, hackers were going out, I guess, in the dead of night and building cell phone towers. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's almost like it sounds completely ridiculous when you say it out loud. All right, number two. Was that somebody else talking, or was that you? That was me. I just did a did a voice there. <laughs> I was doing, like, the Homer whisper, like, You think that's the same grumple from the Christmas show? I do. <laughs> Damn, I actually thought somebody else was with you. <laughs> Number two. Well, I also moved, so that it would sound like it was coming from a different direction. Yeah, that, that'll do it. Uh, Bushido, the soul of Japan, taught us that samurai longed for a noble death in service to their masters and would commit suicide if they failed. Most Hollywood depictions of samurai are based on this idea. However, author Inazo Nitobe based his research on a rule book written for samurai rather than actual samurai. In truth, the samurai were more like today's professional athletes willing to fight and kill for a price. Yeah, they gotta make man's meat somehow. Yeah. They also weren't big on using swords. They they preferred bows and arrows. Oh, and I like swords. I mean, they they kept swords, but um, they they preferred to kill at long distance. Uh, and number one, how, as a matter of fact, I just want to say that um, they thought if a samurai was an unusually good swordsman, they usually thought that that meant that he was a crappy archer. Huh. All right, number one, Hollywood and history books tell us that the European settlers defeated the Indians. But just two years before the Pilgrims landed in New England, about 96% of the Indians in Massachusetts were wiped out by an apocalyptic plague. 
Nationwide, 90% of the Native Americans were killed. The settlers had a hard enough time defeating the Mad Max-style stragglers who remained. So you think about it. If that plague hadn't happened and they were at full strength, things would have happened very, very differently. Yeah. They'd have hauled their jolly asses back to England, huh? And we wouldn't be here. Probably not, no. All right, well, out of uh, 22, what do you say? 16. Uh, I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say 18. Oh, right. yeah. They were interesting. All right, well, well that's going to be List Critics. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you later in the month for List Critics 2 with Jesse. And, uh, hey, look, it, it, we, we recorded this. I don't know what's going on. But we recorded this on the 5th. It's almost like we didn't want to wait the whole month. Fuzzy pickles, bitches. Indeed.